seconds if I added myself. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Sabaho, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, hey, Marilyn's in the comments. Uh, uh, Elaine, hey, uh, hey, so hopefully you guys are doing well. I uh, Let me know if you guys notice, uh, just kind of like right out of the box, if you notice anything a little different in the um, in the setup today. That actually is very pretty, a couple of things I've changed here, but uh, primary thing I kind of tweeted about uh, during the week, what actually is changing. But short answer, Sabaha, everybody, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to Saturday Morning with Tech. Um, it is episode 43 on October 24th, 2020. And um, we have a couple of new things in the shop. Uh, actually, one main thing, obviously, is the brand new OnePlus Buds uh, Z or Z, depending where you are. Uh, and uh, these are OnePlus's attempt to give us a sub $50, essentially like $49.99 um, pair of truly wireless headphones at a basically not only a great price, but also a great feature set. And we'll talk a little bit more about that one as well. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of people. Davin is in the comments. Can't wait for the Mate 40 Pro versus Note 20 Ultra comparison. Um, DJ, as soon as I'm able to get my uh, my uh, Note 20 Ultra back from uh, Juan, I'll... Uh, I'll have to basically uh, start working on that part. Uh, Matt Tyler's in the comment. Good morning. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. And um, actually speaking of which, since you guys started talking about that, uh, we're going to do a, an unboxing of the brand new Mate 40 Pro. So uh, the Mate 40 Pro was just announced a few days ago. I want to say on the 22nd, I'm not 100% sure on the timeline, uh, but it was just announced by Huawei. Uh, we all are obviously, you know, anticipating the successor to last year's Mate 30 Pro. Um, Last year during this time, though, I was in Germany actually attending the launch event of the Mate 30 Pro, and there was obviously a lot of new announcements done at the time, uh, one of which obviously is the new design, the new aesthetics of the Mate 30 that gave us that nice little waterfall display that actually has a much sharper, um, I would say, edge to almost give you that seamless uh, side con uh, connection. And of course, uh, the fact that this phone does not actually have a volume rocker on it, that the volume controls are on display, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, Ronaldo's in the comments. Good morning, Joe. Joe, good morning, guys. Hey, welcome back. Um, and then, of course, uh, what I want to talk about, obviously, is the some of the new stuff going on in here, uh, the, some of the software in there, my impressions of the device. I've had it literally for about a day. I got it yesterday, and I haven't had a chance to basically play with it enough time to be able to kind of do a full video. So uh, there'll be an impressions video going on, going up about, from this uh, in both English and Arabic in very short time. Um, and I may also put some things up on uh, as well as also on XDA. Uh, but the big thing on, on here, obviously, is that this is the latest and greatest. It is running Emotion UI or EMUI 11. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on about it. Uh, the other thing I also want to talk to you guys about today was uh, a couple of videos that I put out this week on the channel that seem to be pretty popular. And those are the OnePlus Buds versus the OnePlus Buds Plus. Uh, sorry, the OnePlus Buds versus the OnePlus Bl uh, Buds Z. The Buds versus the Buds Z. Let's just call them that. The, having OnePlus in front of it just makes it a very long title. Um, sabaho, everybody. Sabaho. Um, so the short thing is, uh, there was a lot of questions going on about those. You know, which one is better? Which one is, uh, you know, which one do you prefer? Which one is going to be a better deal? Uh, there is a price difference between the two, and it's literally about ten bucks, at least here in the U.S. I'm not sure if in other areas just the price difference is about the same. They did drop the price on the buds, uh, the original buds, from seventy nine to fifty nine. So that's the big difference, twenty bucks difference. Uh, and I'm hoping, obviously, that the price will stay down at that level uh, because I feel like they both are pretty good competition for each other with a slightly different experience. Um, and I just realized I have notifications on and I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> I'll have to double check. Um, let me see here. Uh, my speaker. No, I, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, IR 1980. Good morning. Sabaho, everybody. Oh, Sabaho and good evening all. Yes. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Um, in the UK, it's much later in the afternoon. Uh, Davin Davis, of course. Uh, Davin's wondering if uh, Matt ever got, got a chance to fix the uh, ROG Phone 2. Uh, Matt, I'm, I wasn't even aware that the ROG Phone 2 got hit. Did, uh, did you end up having the same problem I did? Well, I'm hopefully not. Uh, and, uh, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, Joe, I think Matt is should be off by the time this, uh, you know, uh, by the time the show starts. And of course, uh, team buds with everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, oh, yes, yes, no, no, the PS5, Ronaldo, I, I saw, we all saw your comment on the PS5 conversation, and uh, Ayush is saying, uh, is saying, it's India, it is late, it's late in the evening, Ayush, if I'm not mistaken, I think most people usually tell me that it's uh, more like closer to 1 a.m. in the morning, or 12 to 1 a.m., so I hope you're doing fine, and I hope you're doing well, actually, and you're staying safe. 
Um, <laughs> Matt Tyler starting us off with the with a big bang. Uh, thank you for the super chat, TKR, hashtag TKR Bay. TK, hope your stream uh, gets busy like last week. Let's go, let's go. I am hoping that it does as well. Uh, last week, we had a, somewhat of a phenomenon. Thank you again, uh, Matt. Uh, we had a, uh, a phenomenon going on, which I could not for the life of me explain. At some point during the stream, we had a massive influx of people, like a massive influx. We, we almost topped off 500 uh, concurrent viewers at the same time. And I don't know exactly what caused it, what was the stream from it. Uh, the only thing I can tell essentially is that it, it just started on its own. And uh, there was not much else other than, you know, thank you. And I hope uh, whoever watched the show, if they're back this week, that you're enjoying it as well. Um, so Ronaldo did get a chance to also kind of comment on that one. Uh, he had a, a tweet going on, I think was it re referring to the fact that a lot of people did not get their PS5 yet, that they pre-ordered. And some that couldn't pre-order because I'm in that camp. I couldn't even get a pre-order. Uh, but then there were some reviewers that they did receive uh, their units. Um, it's an interesting concept. Uh, I would say um, I, I, I half of me kind of feels exactly what it is. I mean, in a situation where I wish I was part of the team that did get the early units. I'm also on the other end, too. I also wish I had a pre-order uh, pre that I wasn't able to get. So I'm, I'm probably going to be one of those that end up having to go till next year to pick up a PS5 or an Xbox Series, uh, well, Series X. And we'll have to see, obviously, how that goes. Uh, but I, 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 I am with you on that, uh, Ronaldo. Uh, let's see here real quick. So first question, hey, TK, OnePlus Buds has the same sensor feature like the OnePlus Buds. Um, it does both play and pause when removed from the ear. So the test that I showed you guys in the video, uh, uh, Prem, I actually did it live. So as you saw, I took it out and put it back in. Uh, it does have the play and pause, but for some reason, there, uh, the insertion back in the year for me didn't work. So maybe I'm having a little bit of an issue, but at least on my end, if you unbox it or take it out directly out of the case itself. So let's say they're closed like this. I take them out, put them in my ear. Yes, it does automatically start. The autoplay function works. And if I take them out of my ear, it does pause. It's just that for me, only the buds did yeah, the ability when I had them out of the case, I took them out, pause, put them back, play it again. Uh, the reason I say this is if we look on the Bond Plus buds, uh, actually the buds uh, here, we don't have that sensor uh, that we have on the OnePlus buds. Uh, and that what I mean is there's an actual difference. Let me show you what I mean. Yeah, hopefully this kind of shows you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and switch over to the top. Uh, you'll notice that there's, there's a different sensor. There is an actual proximity sensor that's present here on the OnePlus Buds. Here, these are the actual connectors for the charger, where on the OnePlus Buds, they're sitting at the bottom. So I'm with you, uh, Prim. I'm, I hope I, I'm not trying to negate what you're saying, and I do realize that it does actually work. It's just that when I was testing them that time, it, it didn't do that for me, and I did it a few times on my end. So it could be a software issue, maybe a firmware issue that I need to just get a, a much newer firmware, but we'll have to see. Um, Ronaldo's coming back. <laughs> like, uh, I guess uh, I have the same. I, I have the same, but at least I got uh, my Xbox Series X and X on pre-order. And for that, also you're you're very much uh, in that really good spot because you were able to pick it up. I chose not to go for the S, although I did have an opportunity. I saw that the uh, X is sold it sold faster than the S, and that the S tickled, uh, S was available a little bit more for me. I need to have the drive. I don't necessarily want to go all digital, neither on the 5 or the X. So whichever one I end up picking up, which I personally would have preferred going with the Series X because I've had original Xbox, the 360, the Xbox One, the Xbox One, and I have a lot of my games and a lot of my uh, kind of like I'm invested in the, in the Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, but yes, no, definitely. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, Matt Tyler, yes, I saw your tweet. Surprised you weren't uh, offered an exchange. Oh, okay. I think you guys were talking about the uh, the gap yet. Um, so yes, there seems to be a concern. There seems to be an issue with some units. Uh, Greg, of course, is also on the comment. Uh, there seems to be concerns and some issues, and that kind of you know surfaced in the last week or so regarding some Pixel Five units that having that are having some uh, separation between the display and the actual casing, the metal, the actual uh, frame of the phone. And um, if, I, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think Google is offering exchanges if you purchase it directly through them. Although if you purchase it through third party sellers, that experience may be a little bit different. And of course, since I didn't actually I, I got mine directly, uh, I did check mine and I don't have that issue. So it's not a consistent. I would say it's not affecting all hardware, but some batches. I'm hoping they're able to replace them and then provide people uh, a good way of getting them uh, basically you know, their situations resolved. 
Uh, and I said, uh, good morning, Greg, of course, comments. Um, one plus bullets Z versus one plus uh, one plus bullets high. Um, so Rushi, Rushi um, I would say one plus wireless buds Z. So I would probably say the one plus buds Z as opposed to the wireless Z. The, the from the bullets side of uh, the uh, headphones, when it comes to one plus, the one plus bullets two are the best one plus bullets that they've offered. The bullets Z are uh, the sound quality is not as good. They have lower latency and they have pretty much similar uh, aesthetics as the uh, OnePlus Buds 2. So if you have to compare the Z to the Z, I would go with the wireless one, uh, especially with the truly wireless, mostly because of the benefit and of course, roughly about the price point. Um, if I'm going to go at around 50 bucks, I'd rather have something that does not hang on my neck and I have to go that far with it. Although if it offers me better sound like the Bullets 2, then I, uh, the Bullets Wireless 2, then I definitely would go with those. So I'm hoping that kind of straightens that one out for you. Um, TK, still hunting for the, uh, for a small phone, thinking of a P44. So Davin Davis is looking for a smaller phone. Uh, I, I think the P, the, the Mate 40 or the, the P40, I think it's, it's a decent size phone. I actually, uh, don't think that the P40 Pro is even that big. Uh, it does have a longer form factor, but I think if you're looking for more of a one-handed operation, uh, yes, the P40 Pro, the P40 will definitely fit that, uh, that bill. Um, although I don't really think the P40 Pro is that much bigger, but you can let me know what you think as far as uh, physical dimensions. Have you thought about maybe the OnePlus Nord or maybe the Pixel 5? Uh, those are some of the other options available as well. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad is saying, is, is the OnePlus Bud Z worth the money? Yes, absolutely. Uh, for 50 bucks, you're getting some of the, I would say it was one of the best options that you can get for OnePlus right now. Um, the sound is actually pretty good, uh, especially on OnePlus devices till that Hey Melody application gets released. So just from a, a small background on that one, uh, OnePlus first announced, or they originally first launched the OnePlus Buds. And then at that point, obviously, they gave all of the function controls into OnePlus devices, recent OnePlus devices, and the settings of the Bluetooth tab. And if you connected them to any phone other than OnePlus, and you would have no control. So you couldn't configure the double tap. You couldn't configure the, the codec for the audio. So they're fixing this issue by providing a separate application called Hey Melody. So it's going to be the OnePlus Hey Melody application, and that will allow us to actually get some of these benefits. And of course, those are the things that make the OnePlus Buds so much better. The Z even better because of the price point. So from a music standpoint, um, Muhammad, I would say, yes, absolutely. They sound good for 50 bucks. Make sure you set your expectation. I mean, I wouldn't expect $300 performance with noise cancellation, all the bells and whistles on a 10 millimeter driver um, on the OnePlus Bud Z. So keep those in mind. Uh, the OnePlus Buds, by the way, have a 13.4 millimeter driver, better drivers on the OnePlus Buds, just kind of a reference, but they need better drivers so that you can play the music a little bit louder to compensate for the fact that you actually have an open experience here. So because of environmental sound coming in through, you need to have better audio. I'm not saying you don't need it on the OnePlus Buds Z. It's just that on those, because they're in ear, and of course, with the custom options that we have with the EQ, with the Dolby Atmos, and configure, you know, all the setup information, you're definitely not going to be disappointed. They're great for music listening. They're they're pretty good. I'm not going to say they're the best. They're pretty good when it comes to phone calls. If you make phone calls or obviously video chat, so I wouldn't be disappointed. Uh, and of course, depending on where you are, it may be even cheaper than fifty bucks. Um. DX is saying, is there some lag in his audio, guys? Let me know. Yeah, please let me know if there's any audio lag um, going on. I, On my end, at least it doesn't seem like it is, but we'll have to get that. Um, here, let's see real quick. Uh, yeah, so, oops, I think I jumped. You know, see, what happens is when I when I'm, when I scroll down a little bit, uh, we get like a massive uh, jump in comments. So let's go jump here. Um, Joe... Yeah, I've always been uh, I've always been team PlayStation. Uh, it's like Android versus iPhone. <laughs> okay, so Joe's team PlayStation Five. So definitely, um, I, it, guys, just for reference, I have a PlayStation Three. I haven't upgraded since the PlayStation Three, mostly because I've shifted most of my gaming, my heavy duty gaming, to PC gaming. So that's mostly what you know. If you guys have played like Madden, Sam, and and of course uh, Fat Produce will attest to, it's PC gaming all the way for me when it comes down to basically just the best experience. Uh, not to say that I wouldn't play Call of Duty on uh, on Xbox or anything like that. It's just that because it's sitting in the living room and it's more of a common area between my wife and my son, it's hard for me to play that uh, whenever I want. On a PC in my office, I can you know turn off the camera, turn it on, and just go at it and have fun. But I, I'm totally with you. Uh, and yes, Matt and Sam are both PlayStation uh, all the way. Um, 
Greg said, uh, I got uh, Android 11 flashed on my OnePlus, uh, on my OnePlus 5. I'm assuming you're getting it uh, as a GSI, right, uh, Greg? Uh, or I get, is it a custom ROM? Which, which version, which ROM are you running on it? Um, Okay, so uh, Vishu R has, I really do want to buy the OnePlus Buds, but then we're, uh, they were confused whether it would be comfortable or not. So I'm planning on buying the OnePlus Buds Z after watching your video. Hope it's a good overall performer. Yes, I think overall uh, phone calls are decent. They're not bad, but as if you saw the video, I'm sure you heard the difference in audio. The having three microphones is definitely going to be better. But again, the reality, most of us don't make phone calls all the time anymore, so it's not like a high priority. It's weird, like, you know, six, seven years ago, or even 10 years ago, people would have been like, well, microphone quality has to be really up there. Now it's like, as long as it sounds okay and they can hear me, I'm okay with it. And I think that's where the difference is. But as far as audio, uh, make sure you go in there when you get them and connect them to your OnePlus, configure them, turn on the options in there, and set the EQ, not just turning on Dolby, set the EQ, and definitely you're going to enjoy the music on them. Uh, definitely, and for the price, again, you cannot go wrong for the price. The the features for the price, it's hard to beat. Fifty bucks. Um, okay, so here, um, uh, Shahriar, hope, Shahriar. Hopefully, I'm saying that name correctly. Um, the AAC codec showed uh, incompatibility with uh, with our last uh, in your last video, facing some issues in other earbuds uh, with my OnePlus Eight as well as my uh, on Ox on uh, Oxygen OS Eleven. It works well on Oxygen and and therefore uh, doesn't work well uh, in SBC mode. Um, so what you're talking so there's two modes in the audio. Just to reference from what Shahriar is saying is there's two modes in there. There's AAC and uh, SBC, and AAC does automatically when you turn it on actually mentioned that there is some compatibility issue. Um, Android 11 is just out the door when it comes down to the OnePlus 8T, and that's what I was testing it on. I had I did not have any problems with playing music, meaning it didn't it didn't actually turn off the audio in any situation where it was saying that's the error that I would get. I want to say that basically I listened to podcast, YouTube music, title, uh, videos on YouTube, as well as watching content on Netflix and so on, and all along, no problems at all. There is a second codec that you can jump into, which is SBC. But my only concern would say, I would say, is we just need to give OnePlus a little bit more time. They they literally just released the final version of Oxygen OS 11, um, and that's just right at the door. And I mean, they're one of the first ones to release a non-beta version of that operating system on their devices. So I'm with you. Um, I hope that if there if there is any issues with the concerns, I'm assuming you're having disconnects where it just goes uh, no sound. Uh, I For me, if I actually have things like that, I would just put them back in the headphones and put them back on. So maybe that fixes the problem. Um, Mine wasn't too bad. Um, what well, mine wasn't too bad. Joe's coming back, right? It shouldn't. It should be. Oh, okay. So I think uh, Joe's commenting on somebody else's. Uh, okay. So Muhammad came back. Uh, I think Muhammad, if I'm not mistaken, I think we answered your question. If I'm not, unless I'm reading somebody else's, and we have a couple of Muhammads in the comment. Yes. Um, uh, Muhammad, we. I think I got the comment, and hopefully you, you got it, and hopefully you, you saw that I saw the comment there. Uh, uh, just smile, Sabaho. <laughs> I like the beard, man. I like the beard. Uh, J Davin Davis, uh, answer, oh, he's I think answering Joe. Uh, oh, here, uh, Joe's coming back. Is to be fair though, um, uh, I reached out to Google and they are replacing it for me, having a faulty device sent to, uh, to us, uh, for, for an investigator. Okay, so obviously, they, they have they're aware of it and they're wanting to fix it. Um, the young one commented three times with the same comment. Uh, Okay, let's let's answer this one. Hopefully, we can get that one out. Um, okay, so he says, uh, "What should I buy, the buds or the buds Z?" If you don't have any of the buds, obviously, if you haven't purchased anything from OnePlus when it comes to audio before, so this is the first buds that you're looking for. Honestly, I would say this is the biggest factor. If phone calls are not a big factor into what you need, meaning if you just want okay audio when it comes to phone calls, go for the OnePlus Bud Z. If you want to have the best audio experience between the two when it comes to phone calls, then go for the OnePlus Buds. The OnePlus Bud Z by default, because they're in the ear, they're not sitting on in the actual ear, they're actually in the ear canal, will give you better audio. They're closer to the uh, to the eardrum and obviously give you more of an isolation around your ears. So by definition, even though they have a smaller uh, driver on each ear, they don't have to work as hard to provide that audio into our, uh, into a, well, for us to actually enjoy. So just look at it from that aspect. And that's why I would say the OnePlus Bud Z. If, if microphone audio does not need to be the best experience between the two. So hopefully that, that gets the answer for you there. Uh, Davin Davis, uh, Trying to stay under $600, so the Pixel 5 is out. 
Uh, if I'm not mistaken, then uh, one of the other options I probably would, uh, would say is uh, there's the S20 FE, which is actually under 600, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at least, or at least right around that 600 uh, price mark in the, uh, you know, as far as the pricing availability. Um, the OnePlus, sorry, the... Um, Oh, the Pixel 4a 5G, sorry, take that back. So the Pixel 4a 5G, I think if anything, gives you a very close experience to the Pixel 5 with a slightly bigger display. So I know you're looking for a smaller phone, which kind of defeats the purpose there. So I actually, maybe that, that that's out of, the, out of the question. It's cheaper, but it's bigger. Um, and I think if we look at uh, possibly, so maybe another thing we can also talk about, uh, there's also some rumors that the Nord is coming to the US. So that could also still happen at the end of this year. So some of those rumors are coming through. Um, I do say that the OnePlus Nord is a good option, but again, it's a European model right now. So until they have a US model that supports US bands, it's a little bit harder. Um, let me think. I, honestly, I would say the the Note 20, uh, the sorry, not the Note 20, the S20 FE selling for 599 is like right on the mark, but it is a slightly bigger display, which is a little bit hard to get when you're trying to get that nice combination of the two. Uh, the Pixel 3a, uh, uh, sorry, the Pixel 4a is a very good experience, but it has some compromises that you'd need to be comfortable with, uh, namely the Snapdragon 730 as opposed to the 65G, no 5G. Uh, it is 350. It's the same size as the one uh, as the Pixel 5. Uh, but there's obviously a few things going on there. Uh, the other thing I probably would say, if you're not totally against it, is a Pixel 4. Not the XL, but the Pixel 4 is still a good reasonable uh, choice, especially in this year, especially since you still get the benefits of Google's updates, Android 11, uh, great camera processing. And of course, we all know it has wireless charging, 90 hertz, a lot of the benefits that you normally would have expected from a Pixel. Um, but the Pixel 4 is definitely, I think, at least in my opinion, there's a few other options too, because uh, you're talking about smaller form factor. Um, Funny thing is I received uh, my Bose headphones today, but uh, don't currently have my Pixel. I can't believe you guys got Bose headphones. That is such a cool thing to get with a pair with a phone, especially from Google, because I'm typically... So in the US, if you're not familiar, uh, Sony usually does uh, put headphones. I'm not saying Bose, obviously. They put their own headphones. Uh, Sony headphones, true wireless, you know, uh, the... All of the time we get headphones with them, that's the only ones we get them in the US. So for you guys in the UK getting this, absolutely fantastic. And I'm glad that you got those. Uh, and I hope that your replacement uh, will be in the mail much, much faster than anticipated. Um, so, okay. Um, Divyan, Divyash, okay. That one, uh, Divyanash, I, I'm, 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 okay, I'm gonna, sorry. I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna say, um, Wait for the MacBook. Sorry, uh, wait for the MacBook Silicon, or get the MacBook uh, Pro 16. I think you're answering somebody's question, so hopefully I get that. Uh, didn't want to jump into that. So, uh, just smile is asking, do you recommend the Mate 40 Pro for for the future? Right now, I'll have to say that as as a device, as an as as what I saw basically for what I'm noticing from the original version, right? So my point of reference right now is what did we get with the Mate 30 Pro? What did we get with the uh, P40 Pro? And where does the Mate 40 Pro kind of fit, right? That's the 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 combination because we had the Mate 30 last year, the Mate 30 Pro, literally around this time last year. Now we have obviously the P40 and the P40 Pro, the P40 Pro Plus. This the company is just going for really long names, but the short answer is we have different variants. The Mate 40 Pro kind of answers a few things. They did fix the volume rocker, which was an issue for last year. And not, not to say issue in the sense that it didn't work. It was more so that it confused the user experience because the volume rocker kind of experience moved depending where you were. Um, it looks very promising. It's a bigger phone. It has definitely true speakers, true stereo speakers in here. We actually have a speaker on the top, on the bottom. It's featuring the first uh, five nanometer chipset from, uh, from Huawei, which is something that is very new. So we see now that... Um, you know, we have Qualcomm that is going to be having their own, uh, their, their, uh, I think their tech summit, the virtual tech summit next month, or oh, in a month or so, I think in December. I keep forgetting we're still in October. And then um, what we see here essentially is that it's the first five nan nanometer from Huawei. We saw Apple going into five nanometers with the A14. So it's obviously something that we, you know, it's a future proof device from this, from that sense. It has an integrated balloon. Uh, you know, uh, modem here for 5G connectivity. So all of those things are in theory pretty much a good base. 
the one thing I would probably say is even though it's running EMUI 11, it's still running Android 10. So it's not on an Android 11 base. And that's something to kind of keep in mind. So those are the things that I would actually be interested in looking to see how things are moving on. Um, App Gallery and uh, basically, uh, I think it was like Pedal Search is also integrated in here. They're trying to bring in more applications. So it has the potential to become something future-proof, but I haven't really seen all of the the, the pieces fall, uh, fall into, uh, into place. Also, can we actually sideload GMS onto this? This is something that we have to kind of uh, keep in mind. Uh, we've been able to sideload it on other devices in the past, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, I can say that at least two of the methods that we used to be able to use in the past do not work here. Even though we're still on Android 10, there's something to do with the actual version of Android that is also limiting us. So I'm hopingly that I, that answered your question there. Uh, let me double check here, and hopefully I'm not gonna jump six dollars. and I did, ah, dang it. <laughs> the comments do this all the time. Uh, okay, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken here, uh, Joe, uh, I think I saw, um, okay. Uh, okay, so Rushi, uh, OnePlus 8T or OnePlus 8 Pro? Uh, I would go with the 8 Pro, uh, personally, because I like the curved edges on the phone. Uh, on the, phone. the 8T actually has one feature that the Pro doesn't have, and that's a faster charging. So you're you're kind of looking at it as uh, there's a QHD 120 hertz, uh, you know, 30 watt charging with 30 watt wireless charging, or you go uh, 1080p 120 hertz with 65 watt charging. So there's really a plus to both. They're running the same processor. So when it comes down to it, they're very comparable to each other. But I still feel like it's the OnePlus 8, OnePlus 8T, OnePlus 8 Pro. That's the order that I feel like the lineup is actually fitting. So if you're looking at it and you're looking between the two, the 8 Pro would definitely be a better choice. Uh, let me see if I jumped into somebody else's. Uh, oh, okay. So Greg, you're using the uh, the one the the method that was posted in the forum for uh, for installing Android 11 on the OnePlus Five. Um, I just team just got a delivery of a fridge customized like an Xbox Series. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you know. Um, Whatever, whatever's do whatever you, whatever people can do or PR companies can do to basically land that, um, I, I would say, um, land that you know wow factor. That's the best way to say it. Uh, let me see here. Hey, Aditya, sorry. So I just noticed that Aditya is in there, and uh, of course, Davin is in the comments. What do you think of the OnePlus 8 Pro problem? Uh, so I think the display on the OnePlus 8 Pro issues did not affect my unit. So obviously, it, it's it depends on if you had those concerns. Obviously. It, my concern would be this. If you purchase a device from OnePlus and that device has that issue, replace it right away and get it, get yourself a replacement. That should fix the problem. Obviously, it's not right. I'm not going to say it is. But at, we're, we need to be realistic with the, the fact that over the years, if we start looking at what's going on, what are the things that we've seen happen in the past, consistently, consistently, OLED panels at some point or another will end up experiencing a bad batch. It just happens, right? We saw it happening with uh, with Google. We saw it happening uh, with other devices. HTC used to have it in the past. It's not uncommon to have bad displays. So at the end of the day, if you're buying it used, make sure you ask that question. Don't buy it without assuming that it actually has it or it doesn't have it. So obviously, if you're buying it, you need to be aware. Uh, if you just bought the, the device, check it out. Know that, you know, make sure that you have a good unit. And if you don't have a good unit, replace it right away. Those are the only things I would say. It's not right that we should be... I mean, these things shouldn't go through the, uh, the quality assurance and obviously be missed. But the problem is, if you think about it, most QA lines are not checking every single unit. They generally use the sample uh, method. And what that means, essentially, in, on, a, on an installation line, on a process line, whatever it's going through, they pick different pieces and they test them. Obviously, errors could still go through. That's not 100%, but it is basically one of the more efficient ways of doing things as opposed to spending and reducing the, the timeline from production to delivery by working it. So that's one thing that they do. So my hope is that we're still able to do it. Uh, and let me double check here. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Uh, before it disappears, I don't want to miss it. Uh, somebody apparently just posted a uh, a super chat and I noticed it was almost disappearing. Davin Davis super chat, first super chat. <laughs> Please mention Greg's comment on bricking Oxygen OS on the OnePlus 8. So let's go ahead and scroll back real quick. Thank you, Davin. Um, Greg, okay, I had um, two guys on my forum with bricked OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro, um, unre uh, unrecoverable as of now from a note with the no brick tool. Uh, Greg, if you don't mind, because there was a lot of comments, I didn't see it before. I'm going to have to try to see if I can dig for it. 
Uh, ta -ta -ta. If I can, if you can maybe just repost that comment in there. Um, oh, uh, TK and maybe Greg uh, could be more help where side loading shouldn't be an issue. iPhone 12 series are uh, expensive. <laughs> iPhone 12, uh, uh, Mehmet, yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, surprisingly, okay, I don't know if anybody realized this, but I think two of the things that I wanted to kind of cover for you guys today was, A, I actually ended up not ordering any of the iPhones, uh, none of the iPhone 12s. Uh, the 12 Pro and the 12 uh, are not the ones that I would have ordered even if I wanted to. Uh, so th those are things, uh, let me see, internal temp is high. Oh, good to know. Well, now we know we have a problem. Uh, hold on a second, guys. I need to switch cameras. I just realized my primary camera decided to. I am. That is something new. Hey, welcome back, guys. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, we're back. We're back in the show. Uh, one little problem I just discovered that the Sony A7S III is you cannot run it for too long. So we were running it for about 30 minutes. Uh, that's 30 minutes of video recording on the A7 III and uh, it overheated. So it shut itself off. So we'll go ahead and turn it off for a few seconds. Hold on a second. Ah, Sony, always Sony, right? Um, but I guess the temperatures got too hot. But either way, let's go ahead and go back to the comments. And uh, here, uh, so yes, I've, so I, I'm gonna say that I'm probably gonna wait for the iPhone 12 uh, mini. That's probably the most interesting one. And if there is one that I actually do end up picking up for myself for personal use, it'll be the iPhone 11, uh, the iPhone 12 Pro, Pro Max. Uh, Pro Max for me is always gonna be something that I always feel like uh, fits the bill, that does the job, it gives us all the benefits. And it seems like, you know, Apple did it this year as well. They followed Samsung's suit and they decided to say, look, uh, this is going to be the best option that we're going to be able to offer you. All the best cameras, all the best sensors are on the 11, on the 12 Pro Max. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, let me see if I can find, uh, but yes, uh, hopefully. Uh, Mark, honestly, I would say if microphone quality on the two wireless headphones uh, is not a big issue, I would definitely go with the OnePlus Buds uh, Z. Those are going to be the better option between the two um, here. Sue, uh, Sue Dix, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Dixonson. Um, love the Mate 20X. Uh, what phone? Uh, okay, has has the same screen size and sound quality. Um, I do love Huawei, but uh, turned off due to the Google services concern. So right now, Huawei hasn't released a successor, and uh, not even one, not even Honor released the successor. So Honor had a, a phone. They called it the Note 10. This was a Note 10 before Samsung had a Note 10, and it doesn't support a pen. But essentially, it was a big form factor phone, stereo speakers, latest processor. So if you're looking for another phone on the market that you could pick up, uh, you could definitely check out the Note 10. And uh, that one's more of a Chinese model only, though, where the 20, uh, the Mate 20X uh, was available in the European market. So uh, sadly, very few phones are going up there. Uh, but I would say if there's any competition to it as far as size, I would say the uh, OnePlus 8 Pro is definitely one of the bigger phones with really good display, uh, large battery, and of course, great, uh, great, great audio quality when it comes down to the speakers. Uh, I can't seem to find that comment, guys. I do apologize. I, I'm trying to find, but it, you got to remember it's an aggregation of comments from multiple sources. Uh, let's see here, Greg. Uh, so I think the short thing that I think Greg was trying to cover for everybody was be careful what you're doing with a OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro um, here. Uh, the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro VR local upgrade, if you go back to an older version, it will break your device. So yes, you're if you're well, actually in theory though, Greg, if I'm not mistaken, I think if you're trying to downgrade on the OnePlus 8 using the local upgrade, it doesn't allow you to go back. It says this, this update is not newer. It's an older version, so you shouldn't be able to, unless you try to force update it in the recovery, which I feel like most people shouldn't be doing. Uh, but it, as a general rule, always go forward. So if you say, if let's say you decide to go on the OnePlus uh, beta program, let's say you go on the OnePlus beta side and you wanna be able to go back to the OnePlus stable side, uh, there is a downgrade file that is specifically listed from OnePlus for you to be able to do it. And it's usually listed on the same page where you download the beta file the first time you get into it. And that's the way to do it. The only other way to do it is to wait for the beta program. So don't update the beta 
and wait for the stable version to go forward beyond it. And once you do that, then you're able to upgrade it to the stable version. It doesn't guarantee that your files will still be there, but general rule, always go forward, never go backwards. And in theory, if you use the file that is provided by OnePlus uh, directly when you first set it up, that should get your, uh, that should get you running pretty smoothly. And I think overall the experience should be pretty clean. Um, but it does reset your phone. So essentially you lose all of the information going back to stable. But that's the theory. And I think uh, Greg definitely has a good point on that one. Um, uh, MD Fer uh, Ferdou, um, Ferdou, hopefully. Uh, uh, hey, TK. Uh, from um, from Yellowknife 7, uh, negative 7 Celsius, the Bud Z um, ear tips. Okay. Uh, negative 7 Celsius. That's actually pretty cold. Uh, the Bud Z ear tip. Is it comfortable as AirPods Pro? Or uh, wearing uh, for wearing them for an extended amount of time, need a second pay uh, paid or earbud uh, shopping around for buds or buds. Okay. First thing, the 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 uh, the, the Apple buds have sorry the Apple uh, AirPods Pro have special silicon made by Apple. These are not standard size, and you needed to buy them directly from Apple. So there's a little bit of a difference there in the quality and the material. Most other earphones, if you've used any other earphones that use those silicon tips that you usually see on them, that's very much the exact experience that you're getting with the OnePlus Bud Z. Between the two for an extended amount of time, I personally recommend using something that seals the ear from a sense of A, two things. A, it's negative to seven, so it means it's pretty cold. Anything that reduces the amount of cold temperature going into your ears to make the experience uncomfortable will help. So the Bud Z will definitely fit you better and will work better for an extended amount of time. If you do decide to pick up maybe higher quality buds, like maybe more of the foam buds that do form fit the actual ear canal, then that actually will fit you better and work, will work much better for you. And these should work on the OnePlus buds. They may not fit in the case, but they definitely will work. I'm only saying that because I'm not sure depending on the tips that you end up buying. So the Zs should definitely do a much better job, especially in cold weather, because it does seal and it provide the, you know allows it so that your ear, the inside part of the ear doesn't cool, that doesn't actually get all that uh, cold temperature in. Let's see else here. Um, wide angle lenses for the win, definitely. Uh, we'll, okay, let's see here. Um, Sai is saying, will I be missing uh, out uh, on something if I use the buds on my OnePlus 6? No, uh, no, none of the features will be missed. And again, once the actual availability of the Bud Z officially becomes available for everybody to order, uh, you'll be able to actually just download the Hey Melody application. So even if anything is missing for some reason or another, if you're running a custom ROM or whatever, you just download the app and all the features will come back. All the functional features will come back. So no, no, no issues at all. Um, okay. I think I'm starting to skip a whole bunch of people. So let me see. Uh, not intentionally. Sorry. Uh, oh, Oh, okay. So Greg, I think is commenting. Hold on. I think I missed the comment here. Uh, so Greg is saying essentially is that once you, after you go to Android 11, sorry. So if there, if you're on Android 11 on the one plus eight and one plus eight pro and try to downgrade to an earlier version, you're bricking your phone. So yes, versions of the, the comments that I mentioned before, by the way, were running, if you were on um, OnePlus beta, an example would be OnePlus beta on the um, I, on Android 10, and you were running stable OnePlus, uh, OnePlus Oxygen OS 10. So you were on Android 10, Android 10 on both the beta and the stable. I am by no means do I recommend you guys flashing back in a ROM, specifically when you're jumping operating system, because the operating system is, is not the same uh, changing an operating system is not changing a ROM in the same aspect because uh, ROMs generally only change the local. It's think of it like installing an operating system on your phone. You're changing it specifically on uh, the actual working partition of your phone. So you're basically your kernel in general will I get updated. You'll get your operating system changed, but then it doesn't actually change different things like the recovery doesn't get updated and certain partitions like you know depending if you have an A and B partition on your system. So when you change operating system from 10 to 11, from nine to 10, those files tend to change. And when you're downgrading to a different ROM, you're not changing everything back. You're just changing the operating system, leaving everything else in this, uh, on your phone, thinking that it is basically optimized to run on Android 11. So don't do that. That is a problem. And I think that's the uh, in the general what uh, Greg is trying to reference. Uh, if you're on Android 11 and you decided to go and you went to Android 11, you're pretty much stuck on this point. The only other thing you can probably do is if you're unlocked and you're running a custom ROM, wait to start seeing some other uh, custom ROMs that are, are maybe a little bit too more, more to your liking if you don't like too much of the UI elements that are coming in. So hopefully that answers that question. Um, 
So here, um, I heard that the Pixel 5 does that recording video. Okay, so I'm not sure which one is it that is, uh, Joe, sorry. Um, and I think we answered this one. Okay, does does the non OnePlus user, can the, can the non OnePlus user customize the functions of the earbuds or not? What about Hey Melody release? Okay. Um, Right now, without the Hey Melody, no, you cannot. It is what it is out of the box. Out of the box, I think both the right and left are pause and, uh, basically pause and play. Um, uh, obviously, they work differently when you have a phone call. The Hey Melody application is going to be released at the time of the official availability of the OnePlus Buds, and it will cover both the Buds and the Buds Z. So that's the big thing. Once you get those, and if you're using a non-OnePlus phone, it's going to work perfectly fine, and you'll be able to customize it. If you don't have the Hey Melody app, they are just going to work like any other pair of headphones. The difference here is the double tap function is that we don't have a way of turning it off. That's basically what we do, or even customizing it. So if that's what you're looking for, just wait for the Hey Melody app. And there's a lot of posts on um, the OnePlus forums talking about the app and for as far as availability. It should be available at the time of the Buds availability officially. Right now, what you're seeing, this is pre-release, and that's what was sent to me. So those are the things you want to keep in mind. OK. Um, I and I think that was just saying. Uh, and I think we just covered uh, Greg's comment as far as updating it there. So. Um, so Daniel, uh, Daniel has a question. Deacon, I saw on some websites um, and channels that the iPhone 12 barely over uh, over overperforms on the iPhone 11 in benchmarks and in N22, and uh, the A14 processor matches the Snapdragon 865 performance. Um, what would you think on that? Uh, so, I think if we remember correctly, uh, Apple's main claim of fame was the fact that it is much faster than the 865 Plus, not even the 865. Um, as far as performance and what we're getting for, for synthetic benchmarks, it's a little bit hard to kind of justify what is the processor doing. Because once the system recognizes that it's being tested, it performs in a specific preset mode. Um, we've seen this with other companies where they usually you know, either overclock or underclock, depending on the, on the situation. Uh, one thing for sure is the Snapdragon 865 and the A65, uh, 865 Plus are both 7 nanometer chipsets. The A14 is a 5 nanometer chipset. Performance-wise, honestly, at the end of the day, the biggest difference that you'll notice on a processor when you start looking into it, it's when you're doing the heavy lifting. It's when you're doing tasks that are normally out of the normal process. It's not when you're opening and closing an app and you're jumping into social media. So from, from that aspect, honestly, the Pixel 4a performed as good as the Pixel, uh, uh, Pixel, 4, uh, Pixel 5, uh, even though we're talking 730 to 765. But when it comes to an iPhone, at the end, Honestly, for the most part, when we start looking at these comparisons, we also have to kind of take them with a slight grain of salt there because most iPhone users are not going to pick up an Android phone and say, oh, look, this is so much faster than mine. Most people that decide to go one way or the other are deciding it based on an existing premise of what they prefer. Is the performance really that close? I'll have to get it get it into the lab and actually do some testing. I am going to be picking up a device with an A14 very soon. And hopefully when we start having more, eight, well, we see the new chips at the 875, we'll have to see also what Qualcomm comes in with, uh, with their view. Because you notice they're a little bit quiet right now. Everybody's kind of showing off their five nanometers. So we really need to see there. But if it is just barely better than the 865, honestly, at the end of the day, is it going to be okay for an iPhone user? Absolutely. Is it going to be okay for an Android user? I think absolutely, because an Android user is not going to jump into iOS just for the sake of those little differences. I, I would say my hope essentially is that they are able to prove those different uh, that there is that big of a difference in performance, and they don't make such, uh, I would say, uh, very bold statements if they don't show you the actual data as opposed to just a chart. So we'll have to see. Um, it, it's a little concerning that it wouldn't be as much of a, at least a bigger performance. If it's comparable to an 865, where the 865 Plus is actually faster, that's that's concerning. But every single iPhone user will not even care. Uh, at the, because at the end of the day, as long as their phones perform well, they do the jobs that they want them, they process the video that they want, they do all of the work that they want without any hiccups, they're happy with it. Um, would you recommend upgrading from the uh, the iPhone 11 Pro Max to the iPhone 12 Pro Max if the cameras are a concern for you? For me, honestly, I don't think it's a big issue, a big of an upgrade. I think the the upgrades that we see are generally meant for iPhone users that are on the two year mark. They're not meant for the year to year upgrade. Uh, there are minor changes that they change from one to the other because and I because if we start off by saying, look iOS 14 is already released on the iPhone 12, on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and it runs beautifully. It runs great on the iPhone SE 2020. 
there's no question that we already have all the new features. It, when it, it's literally all it does is when it comes down to the aesthetics, the design of the phone, as well as the camera setup. If you need those cameras, the better the new sensors that they're talking about with the, uh, of course, just the new design, then yes, it's worth it. But if that's not gonna, if you're not gonna worry about it, you're gonna have it in a case anyways, and you're happy with the sensors. I think honestly, this is more of a, an, iPhone, an iPhone, basically the um, the iPhone X, the X, uh, you know, uh, the, the I would say two years ago. I honestly don't think it's it's a worth of an upgrade from last year, especially because unless you want the smaller factor, I step back. If you want the mini, the mini would definitely be good. But for the 11 Pro, the 11 Pro Max to the 12 Pro Max, I think it's it's a, it's a generational upgrade, not necessarily the 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 biggest decision. I would say. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Sai, I think we got we answered that one. No, uh, I think all your all the features will definitely work well for you guys. Guys, only post your questions once. And yeah, please, Matt. Thank you very much. Uh, if you're noticing that your question didn't get picked, wait a little bit. I am going through a list, so I will get to your question. And if you post it multiple times, it ends up being added to the bottom of that list. It doesn't move you up. So it's not a how many times do I post to get my answers. It's more of literally. Uh, it's just depending on what it, what is going to happen there. So let's go from there. Uh, Ahmed has a question. Hello, Tarit. I hope you're doing fine. Thank you. And I, and I hope you're doing well, As of course. Uh, is there any major differences between the Mate 40 Pro and the Mate 40 Pro Plus? Uh, the camera sensors are definitely one of the which. Um, I heard that Huawei's FreeBuds Pro are the best on the market right now. Uh, is it true? So I don't have the Pro. I do have the FreeBuds. Uh, I do say... I'll, I'll step back and say that the free buds were actually one of the better options, especially with noise cancellation on uh, on buds that do not actually have an ear seal. So they sat in my ear and they still did the noise cancellation. Um, as far as them being the best option on the market, unfortunately, I don't have access to them and I can't really speak to them. Uh, I can tell you that a lot of people that I've spoken to that have used them are happy with them, but I wouldn't necessarily say that they're the best. Uh, for me, I would probably say uh, Sony's are just still one of my favorite ones. Obviously, Sony still makes great uh, noise cancellation, true wireless headphones. Um, but as far as it comes down to the Mate 40 Pro or the Mate 40 Pro Plus, it's going to come down to availability of hardware and, and the technology that's in there. Uh, the Pro Plus is obviously going to be the best option when it comes down to just the best of the best that Huawei has to offer. We saw that with the P40 and the P40 Pro and the P40 Pro Plus, there was actually a gap in hardware. Not all of the sensors were the same. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, let me just double check real quick on the sensors. Um, so the P40 Pro, uh, Pro Plus is, and the Pro, uh, the Pro are both running 6.7 inch displays. Uh, both are going to be running 90 hertz, 240 hertz touch sampling. Uh, they're looking at basically, oh, here it is. So both, oh, so there's going to be more RAM. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the sensors are, there is an additional sensor, which is a time of flight sensor and a color temperature sensor. So the Porsche design has that uh, has that option. So there's a, a slightly different configuration where the Pro has 50, 20, and 12. The Pro Plus has 50, 20, 12, and 8 time of flight sensor. So the camera setup will always be the uh, the best way to kind of gauge it. So if you're if you definitely care about those cameras, those would be those those would be the ones I would recommend you going with, and of course covering those. Uh, but for me, I think the Pro is definitely one of the better options. Uh, Donald Lozino. Hey, Donald, how you doing, man? Uh, good afternoon, TK. Uh, do you think the V60 will drop in price by the end of 2020? Typically, yes. Um, I think when we get closer to the end of the year, and especially with the new announcement of the new chipset, let's say 875, uh, it's generally going to have an effect where the you know the VC, the LG or even just current year processing will generally drop. Uh, is it going to drop dramatically? No. That drop will happen more than likely when we get closer to uh, what we see directly from, uh, you know, when we see the next generation of devices from LG. So that's generally the biggest drop. But I think the V60 is a very good device. If you're able to pick it up on Swappa for a, maybe a used price, but definitely a, not gently used, I wouldn't mind that that's actually a good deal. Definitely uh, check those guys out. Um, Matt's jumping in. Uh, TK, why can, why can you still see the comments I'm removing and I'm timing out that uh, that makes me furious <laughs> comment that deleted five times ago. Um, so what I think probably the process on that Matt is very simple. Uh, the way the system is set, you're I'm not looking at a live um, feed, meaning 
because you're going backwards and and come and uh, editing the list in the back uh, in the on the back end uh, by the time they get to me they've already posted to the server so streamyard shows me all those comments and i don't get a chance to see it and the only way for me to basically get the latest and greatest list is for me to refresh so it's not intended to uh, um it's not personal but it's more of the who gets it first because you're reacting to seeing them but at that by that point by that point it's already on my on my screen that's all it is uh, but I will try if I see the question multiple times, I generally don't answer it. Um, Rushi is asking Samsung, OnePlus, or Apple. Whoa, that's a tough one. Um, I would say go with what you feel is best. <laughs> it's that's a tough one. Uh, generally, those are three camps that if people are users of each one of these devices, they'll stick to what they like. Is one better than the other? Depends on what you're looking at. Uh, honestly, it really depends. Uh, for me, I like Samsung and I like what Samsung does. I love what OnePlus does in the sense of the, their technology and their their improvements, you know, year over year and everything that they do. Um, I do like also uh, Apple, but I generally like them for video only. I don't like using them on a daily basis. Even with iOS 14, I, I feel like iOS 14 has a lot of benefits, a lot of cool things in it, but I still feel like it's slightly behind what we get with Android on a daily basis. So for me, uh, customizing my my entire experience is still for me on an Android ecosystem. So uh, nothing against Apple, nothing against Samsung. If I had to pick between the three, I would go with OnePlus with the Gcam mod. I'll have to caveat that one as well. Uh, Davin's answering a uh, comment right there. Uh, Matt, yeah, Matt, no, dude, you're 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 doing a great job. And and like I said, Matt, I I don't think it's a, a direct thing at you. It's just more of the once it posts to the system, Streamyard captures it. And we even my while on the live stream, I don't see it, but I don't actually because as you guys use it on uh, when you guys are doing the across the podcast. Speaking of which. Tomorrow's Across the Podcast will be at a special time. It'll be a little bit earlier. Um, if you guys are not familiar, Fat Produce, uh, our buddy Matthew, um, is going to be getting, uh, well, he will be getting married. So that's going to be a big event. So the, the the team and everybody else, obviously, as as a lot of us here in the comments will definitely attest, are going to be waiting uh, and obviously look, uh, checking it out and wishing him a best of luck on his new adventure. You know, so... Uh, Yes, keep that in mind. Tomorrow's show a little bit earlier with Matt and Sam, but uh, check it out over on, on their Twitter uh, as well as on their channel across the podcast, and you'll be able to find out exactly when it's going to happen. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so uh, Christopher MS. Uh, okay, TK, the Mi 10T is a, got an LCD. The Poco F2 Pro got AMOLED. Um, if you've used both phones, which one looked higher quality display? So. There's a difference in what we're looking at, right? Um, the, both displays have different refresh rates, different quality. So the the LCD that we're getting here is actually not bad as far as the quality, but as far as just color richness and overall saturation, AMOLED always looks better. There's nothing against LCD and it's just the brightness level. You're able to go much brighter. I just feel like AMOLED will always look better. It just the choice of uh, panels they decided to use on both. And I do have the F2 Pro as well as the Mi 10T. Um, I think the Mi 10 Pro had a better, slightly the better display than what we saw with the Mi 10T because they went AMOLED on that one. So that's a little bit different. But the higher refresh rate, uh, the lower price point, uh, obviously, you know, we have the, the battery, the stereo speakers, a lot of the benefits that we saw with the cameras. And again, we still have the 108 megapixel sensor that we get there, which I feel like is a little bit better than what we get with the Poco F2. So Display only, I would go with the AMOLED over LCD, but that's a personal preference. Uh, both of them looked great, and both are attended for different kind of people. I feel like one is more gaming-centric specifically. Uh, and I feel like uh, when you start looking at the sensors, again, the 100... Uh, yes. Man, we're having internet problems today. Okay. So hopefully that got your answer, your your question there, uh, Christopher. Um, so uh, Swarup, okay, uh, Bet, oh, uh, Bat, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, which one is the best, uh, best smartphone to buy within uh, ten thousand to? Ooh, so for about hundred and forty bucks, that's a. Um, 
It's a very hard one, uh, uh, mostly because in the in the market that I'm in right now, the only thing I would probably say is uh, Realme phones are going to be the best options in that in that price point out of entirely. At least in my experience, I feel like those are the ones that are going to be able to get like something around 100, 100 euros. Um, so the Realme phones are definitely going to be one of the options. The latest ones they released, they had one that's around 100, and then they had a couple that ran about 120. So 120, 130. So I would definitely go with those guys. Uh Okay, this is the owner of the Arabic channel. This is his Arabic channel. Uh, uh, yes, I do have an Arabic channel called Tariq Bay. So if you guys are not familiar with the channel, I do. I ran two channels, an Arabic and an English channel. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you don't mind, just, yeah, don't need to comment it multiple times. But yes, th thank you. Um, Fahad Yusuf, uh, there's a problem with the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro on Oxygen OS 11 with overheating um, and the phone random shutdown, but I uh, but I found the solution and it's downloaded the global update on Oxygen OS 11. Um, okay, uh, I haven't seen any issues for me. So I've run the beta Android 11 for months and I've run the Android 11 update, full update on both of them now. Um, although, take that back, I still am running the beta on my OnePlus 8. The OnePlus 8 Pro has the stable, and then my OnePlus 8T has the stable 11. I haven't had overheating or shutdown. Um, I'm wondering, if, I'm assuming you have both. Is that how you you know, or are you just generally referencing other people's problems? Uh, but if there is an update, my hopefully people can download it and get it running much faster. Uh, Joe, <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe and Matt are just enjoying um uh john um bum gardner uh if you have a google if you have a pixel phone that supports wireless charging so the pixel 4 the pixel 4a um or any device that supports you know pixel device that supports wireless charging I think the Pixel Stand is a nice addition. It's a way to convert your phone into a uh, basically a display, a Samsung, not a Samsung, but like a what is it called? Um, a solution. Basically, what I would say essentially is like a um, the Nest displays. It it charges your phone. Obviously, it charges it as fast possible. It does actually have an option to be able to disconnect the wire and use it directly. Uh, it's a nice little nightstand. You can also customize the alarm to have a nice little sunrise where it turns on the light and increases the, the brightness on the display. There's a few extra features in there that make it more unique than just getting a standard wireless charger. And you can't get those features on any other chargers. So those are things that you can definitely appreciate there. Is it worth the extra price? I, I, I would probably say if you want, maybe double check and see if there's a way to get maybe a decent price on eBay or something. But yeah, it, I think it's a good deal. Definitely. Uh, Ronaldo's jumping in. TK, Carl Pay sa uh, said back on August that he will send the Nord devices to the US through their lab uh, uh, beta program that applied for review units. So uh, Ronaldo's referencing is, uh, so the Nord currently is only available in the European market, I think in the Asian market. Uh, I have one because I was able to get one for review. So OnePlus was gracious, nice enough to actually let me have one. Uh, but it still is a European model, not a US model. And yes, uh, Ronaldo's comment is true. They did have a beta program where they did send some Euro, some Nord. I'm not sure if they were US based though. That's the only thing that uh, Ronaldo that I don't remember Carl mentioning. I think he said that he, uh, the way they were going to get it is essentially send a few units to people to test in the US, not necessarily uh, sending it to the US with a US version of it yet. The comments that I'm referring to in the leaks, a lot of people are basically referencing, I think it's called the N some um, the N100. Uh, I forget the numbering. There's a version of um, like an N something, uh, OnePlus Nord something that was supposed to come to the US at some point. And the rumors were that it wasn't going to be running the 765. It wasn't going to be running the same specifications as the European model. So we'll have to see which one of those are end up being basically the uh, the option that we end up going with. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I'm realizing that there is a version of the Nord already in the U.S., but to my understanding is those are the European models just being tested. Um, Kishan is asking, hey, how, what is your opinion on the OnePlus Buds charging case? Uh, will the Snap case uh, hold for long-term use? Uh, so for the OnePlus Buds, yes, absolutely. For the three, four weeks, almost like two months now that I've had them, not once. It is actually shut and it is magnetic. It's not actually just a clip. So it's not like it's clipping. It actually magnetically closed. Uh, both the Buds and the Buds Plus have the same configuration. So I wouldn't worry about them over time. Uh, they may get looser, but it wouldn't stop them from shutting. So even the, I mean, if this ends up being becoming more loose, 
that may happen, but the actual shutting mechanism should not be affected. So I wouldn't worry about those. Uh, the Pixel 5 overheats recording video, apparently. It, uh, that's, I'm assuming when you're when you're recording 4K. So one thing to keep in mind when you're doing recording video, especially when you're recording video on any device, if you're running a computer, uh, the phone at basically you know outdoors, you're at, you're in a light in a very high, a bright area where the display has to be pumping up the brightest level. Uh, the camera is going to be running and running the processor and obviously using the battery. A lot of different things that are generating heat. Uh, very few companies have had a good good luck with basically being able to get the thermals right. I mean, I think Samsung is one of them. Uh, I want to say Xiaomi is also one of the other ones. I've been able to have no problems. On Sony devices, we've seen it also in the past where they've done, uh, where they kind of have overheating. Hey guys, example, in this video, I started the live stream with the, A7, uh, the A7S the a III. I was hoping to go for more than, uh, for, for the duration of the live stream, but at about 30 minutes, it overheated and shut itself off. So there you go. Heating is always gonna be a concern. I'll, I'll keep in mind though, in the office, it's definitely a little bit warmer because the lights and all of those options that we have in here, uh, but I definitely would appreciate, uh, I mean, we can turn it back on. Let's see how it works. Okay, so the camera is back. Let's go ahead and switch over and we'll see how long it lasts this time. So it did overheat the last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch here and black magic. And here we are. So we're back on the Sony. We'll give it enough time. Hopefully it doesn't overheat again. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, it, it's not, I think 4K then that still does have a, a big pull on the system. Oops, sorry. Um, Nisham is saying, is it, um, is, is it good to buy the OnePlus Bud Z? Yes. Oh, Operation Face Safety. <laughs> oh man, this is. Using new cameras, learning how to use new cameras. Um, I can tell you guys one thing that I'm really, really happy with it is the uh, the auto focusing on this thing. So you could see this this is crazy. If you guys are looking at the at the, at the stream and you're looking, this is how fast it recognizes the face and the hand. So for product placement, if we ever end up doing just these like this, you guys can see it right there, and boom. Speaking of which, we did say we were going to do an unboxing. So let me go ahead and go through some some a few more questions, and then we need to jump over just to do that quick unboxing for you guys and see what comes in there. Um, Ronaldo's asking, uh, oh, sorry, Donald is asking, no, no, we haven't. And I tried reaching out yesterday. I, well, I'm, I'm trying to get in touch with, uh, with uh, Juan Carlos real quick this weekend to kind of set the schedule to start kind of putting out. I think uh, we've had enough time to be able to get our own personal experiences. I think he started to put out some videos on the Note 20 Ultra. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, I think he's itching uh, to get, be able to pick up, uh, get back his uh, his um, duo because I got the duo from him at the moment the update kind of pushed, which I think he was waiting. So hopefully this week or so, we'll, we'll be able to put out some more content uh, relating to this as a uh, the only thing I would say, basically, Techtober, as you guys saw, he has the wing. He got the OnePlus 8. He has the, uh, the Note 20. There's a lot of phones going on in there. And then, you know, he's still busy and trying to get things taken care of there. Uh, Muhammad saying, is the Kirin 9000, sorry, the Kirin 9000 is a 5 nanometer chip uh, as fast as the A14 chip. Sorry. Uh, so for that one, I'm, I'll have to actually wait till I get my, uh, till I pick up my, uh, my iPhone, my iPhone uh, 12 mini. Um, they're not intended to be in the same uh, aspect. I would I wouldn't say necessarily that they're both going to be jumping on the, uh, in their benefit. Um, they're both five nanometers, so essentially the main benefit from five nanometer is less power con uh, consumption, more power efficiency, meaning it operates in a more more efficient pro uh, way and uses less power. So, giving you faster processing, low power consumption is always the uh, the goal of a processor or a chip, chip uh, manufacturer. So. Going from a seven nanometer to a five nanometer, that's the intention. It's to reduce uh, the uh, power consumption, obviously. That's why the battery on the, on, if you look at it, the Mate 40 Pro uh, has a 100 milliamp year less than the Mate, uh, Mate 30 Pro from last year, but essentially should be able to last us longer. So those are the things that we kind of look at and we try to, uh, we see, we're trying to figure out what's going on there. Um, Aditya is answering the question there by OnePlus Buds sound quality. Uh, they sound pretty good for 50 bucks. I, the only thing I would say is uh, they're not super bassy. They have enough bass. And if you tune them the right way, you're able to get that thump in uh, in the ears if you want to try to get that to come out. Um, 
there is different options that you need to turn on and, and play around with the Dolby configuration. Out of the box, if you're just using automatic mode on the dynamic side for Dolby, you may not hear the best experience. So just definitely go into the settings on your OnePlus when you pick them up. Um, uh, let me see here. So just for as a, as a, as a point of reference, if you're gonna if you post the question multiple times, and I see it, and I realize that some of those things are obviously you know being put on hold, I don't. I, I want you to understand it's posting it does not necessarily make you jump ahead of anybody else because everybody's trying to get uh, obviously uh, to get some questions answered there. Um, let's jump in real quick back to Davin. Okay, TK, the the Apple. Oh, so the Apple SS is the ugliest forgotten stepchild. The iPhone 12 uh, targets uh, those uh, those users uh, to upgrade. <laughs> you know, the reality is the XS, the X and the XS are, so the X was an interesting design, right? The first iPhone 10, the 10th anniversary, they came out with the, you know, no button, all of that stuff. The XS was supposed to be the upgrade, the next generation, and ended up being a situation where it created a very mixed experience. But yeah, I agree. I think that's the generation that they're going for. It's not the 11, it's the X series. Definitely. Um, let's jump in here. Uh, do the OnePlus Buds Z sound better than the original OnePlus Buds? Yes, uh, I think they do. Uh, from an audio pr uh, profile, mostly because, again, for the sheer point of reference, uh, it's because they sit in the ear canal. It's not sitting open. You actually get much better sound isolation and it works much better for you. So if you look at it from that sense, I, I, I yeah, the OnePlus Buds Z are definitely a better choice to go with. Uh, it's, it's not a hard decision to go with. Uh, my only thing I would say again is keep in mind microphone quality uh, and of course battery life. Uh, the Buds are actually a little bit better. Uh, Potato is an herb. I think I, we've seen you before. Welcome back. Uh, what is your thoughts on the Xiaomi 10T, uh, the Mi 10, sorry, the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro here in the UK? Honestly, I think that if you're if if you're a fan of Xiaomi devices, if you're a fan of MIUI 12, you're not going to be disappointed. It's a great phone from the aspect of uh, battery capacity, 5,000. We have stereo speakers. Uh, we have uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. It is an LCD panel, but it's still 120 hertz refresh rate, 108 megapixels camera sensor. There's a lot to be said. And of course, much cheaper than what we saw last uh, with the uh, Mi 10 Pro that we saw earlier in the year, which I think a lot of people had some concerns when it came down to the pricing. So you're getting some of the benefits of the Mi 10 Pro as opposed to what you got originally and then of course now with a faster display so it's a win there's no question about that uh scott's in the comment hey good good afternoon scott good afternoon love the beard bud um i love how yours i keep saying this but it's yours is the opposite of mine so it works out perfectly uh scott hashtag beard brother exactly joe got it joe got it every time every time um Abhi, uh, hey tk hi man how you doing <laughs> I, I love it when I'm able to find uh, like a you know some some buddies here uh, that like you know that enjoy a beard you know. Um, okay, uh, so will you make a camera comparison between the Mate 40 Pro versus the Note 20 Ultra versus the Note uh, the iPhone 12 Pro? So it'll end up basically being that camera configuration except for the Pro Max because I wouldn't I'm not picking up the Pro. Uh, I'm actually waiting. I'm out. I'm waiting out this first wave of iPhone videos. Because if you think about it, most people that end up picking up, let's say, reviewers that get the original version, so let's say get the 11, like the 12 Pro, uh, if they pick up the 12 Pro Max later on, for the most part, the focus will be just on the camera. So for me, I'm just going to skip all of it. Um, also, for some reason or another, iPhones typically don't do well on my channel. I don't think I have a very big iPhone uh, following. I do have some glass protectors from uh, stone, uh, white stone dome glass uh, that I do need to make a video on. So I, like I said, I will be picking up a phone, but uh, it's probably going to be the 11, uh, sorry, the 12 Pro Max or the 11, the 12 mini. I keep saying 11. I'm, I'm still not sure there. Um, yeah, <laughs> Scott, definitely. Um, and will you get the Mate 40, Mate 40 Pro Plus? I, I'm hoping that Huawei will grace me the same way they did with the um, uh, P40 because I, I was able to play around with the P40 Pro and the P40 Pro Plus. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get it. Uh, but as far as I understand, I think all... ...reviewers now is there. Sorry, guys. I, I don't know why why the internet is being the internet today. So uh, so here we are. So here's the Mate 40. Sorry. Here's the Mate 30 Pro. Let's go ahead and bring it back. I can bring back my mouse pointer. 
and we'll be back in the game. So here we are. Uh, Mate 40 Pro, again, co-engineered with Leica, Explore. So this one, right out of the box, they're focusing on the app gallery. There is no Google Play services. We know this, and we've known this since last year. So even with this release, we didn't have Google Play services. So now we have it here. This is running Android 10.0 uh, with uh, EMUI 11. So um, let me double check here. Da, da, da. What else information we have? Um, do we have IM? Yes, we do. Okay, so uh, the model number that we're looking here, so you notice right there it says, uh, Huawei Mate 40 Pro, Kirin 9,000, uh, 256 gigs of internal storage, 8 gigs of RAM. Model number is NOH-NX9. The color is Mystic Silver. It is a SIM, dual SIM configuration with 5G with the built-in ballon, uh, uh, basically modem. And as you can see, it says not for sale. So let's go ahead and take out the phone. We'll take this guy out and we'll put the box there. So here we have the Mate 40 Pro. So you can definitely see that they kind of decided to stick with the same aesthetic as they had last year, the circular camera experience, except this year they kind of put the uh, the little separate piece in the center as opposed to last year they had it sitting on the outside. Um, overall, between the two, if you kind of put them close to each other, you can see the device is a little bit bigger. It's running a six point, let me double check and make sure I get the specification for you guys run right there. So we're looking at a 6.67 inch uh, flexible panel. So here, an OLED panel on both of them. Uh, both of them are having the same accented colors. Volume rocker is present here, but they definitely you can see here the, the curvature is very much the same. Um, on the top, we have an IR blaster, but on the new one now we have an actual speaker as, a plus, as well as an earpiece. So that's gonna be one of the big differences. A microphone, and of course we have the antenna bands. Um, on the left side, we pretty much have a clean slate on both sides. And of course, the display just ever so nicely. Let's go ahead and unlock it. Uh, just basically gradually, you can see here, the text just kind of goes really, really nice. So what we also get on the bottom here is no headphone jack, uh, dual SIM configuration on the bottom, USB-C and a bottom firing speaker. And I said here on the right, uh, we obviously have just the, volume, the power button on the right. Uh, the camera setups that we have here, as I mentioned to you guys, is uh, we're looking at a 50 megapixel sensor that's at f1.9 with an RYYB configuration, so similar to the P40 Pro. And of course, we have a 20 megapixel sensor that's going to be your wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel periscope lens and up to basically 5x periscope lens. So the experience and of course, one of the microphones, the dual tone uh, LED flash there. Uh, we have wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. Let's go ahead and open it up here. We'll keep it in. Uh, and as far as the actual box, what else do we get in the box? Uh, we have a SIM removal tool that tells us basically, obviously, the SIM trays at the bottom. Uh, we do have a case that's included in here. Uh, this is the Huawei charger. Let's see here, 66 watt charger in the box. So not 65, 66. So very, very nice. And um, of course, we do have a USB-C to USB-C. I want to say USB, no, USB-A to USB-C cable. Uh, and we do actually get a pair of earphones. So, you know, standard earphones, not going to be the highest quality, but definitely would be really, really appreciated. Uh, and that's pretty much the experience getting it in the box. Uh, the overall UI, let's go ahead and jump in here. Uh, In-display fingerprint sensor, so multi-window here, we got it. Uh, obviously, a camera application, all the different options now, all uh, you know, aperture mode, night mode, portrait, uh, photo. I did post a couple of pictures that I took this morning uh, with the actual camera. So here, uh, I was actually trying to do. You know, speaking of which, I think a lot of you guys were asking, does this support, uh, you know, the mirror sharing? Can we actually can, uh, share the the display directly from it? So let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to go home. I'm going to connect it to my MHL adapter. And hopefully we're going to actually do it here together. I think if I'm like, oh, here we are. So here it is, um, display enabled by default. We'll go ahead and configure it. Uh, and let's jump in into real quick into the images themselves. So here, we're going to go sideways. So this, uh, as you guys have seen in many of the videos, this is the backyard. Obviously here, standard focal length. Uh, we'll jump in. And uh, we're able to just do the Z normal. This is the 3x, and this actually sorry, 3x, and this is the up to 30x. So this is what we get if we go for the 5x. This is where we go uh, a little bit on the 3x. This is standard focal length, and of course, wide angle lens. Uh, I did do a couple of video uh, shots as well. The overall EMUI desktop. Let's go ahead and switch over to desktop mode. Is still here, and you can see it right there. It's present, uh, and of course, next. 
So that's still going to be present there. I'll go ahead and say start. And as you can imagine, we have a uh, mouse control here that we're able to control. So you're seeing it live directly off the phone. Uh, and this is fitted directly to my ecosystem right now. So obviously here, the app drawer, you have to open up different applications, download different things. I did download TikTok. So I usually how I'd like to do it. And of course, once we're done, uh, we can actually click it. And of course, just uh, turn it, turn off desktop mode or just disconnect it. So I'll go ahead and give that a second. Uh, hopefully that kind of was, it, that's kind of like a, the quickest unboxing I've ever done on any device. Uh, let's jump back into the comments and see. I think we have a, quite a few here. Um, no, uh, on the, they're going to work exactly the same on the OnePlus Nord. Uh, uh, Ritma, uh, Rit, uh, sorry, Ritam, if you're using the OnePlus Buds Z or the OnePlus Buds, they're going to work exactly the same. The OnePlus Buds came out with the OnePlus Nord. So by definition, they were intended to work together. Um, Greg's jumping back in. Sorry, guys, I was uh, talking to my neighbor, but the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro get stuck in uh, in the EDL mode or the download mode. So, okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. When, sorry, um, Nita's asking when you can pre order. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're saying they're coming soon. So, I'm hoping within the next week or so. I didn't get a specific date, and I would imagine that each region is a different, uh, slightly different, at least uh, for OnePlus, the way they operate. Um. Uh, okay, I, I get you. Okay, so Matt finally saw it. Yeah, StreamYard and YouTube live chat don't work together. No, uh, the the best way I would probably say, if I if I put if for any reason I'm not saying I'm doing it, but if I put somebody on uh, pause in StreamYard, then it does actually pause them on my side because it refreshes the stream for me. But when you do it on YouTube side, it, it stops it from the YouTube end, but it doesn't stop it on my end. So uh, we may need to figure out something. We can talk. We can talk later during a match of uh, Call of Duty. That's the best way to say it. Um, so, uh, uh, sorry. So, Rafat is asking which one is better. Honestly, simple way. Sound, the Buds Z are better. Microphone sound, the Buds are better. Um, range, Buds are better. Uh, and as far as microphone quality, the Buds are better. Hopefully that answers. Uh, how's the call quality on the OnePlus Buds Z? Uh, Listening to them, it's actually pretty good. Uh, Navim is asking, and uh, as far as phone calls, the other side can hear me. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, Navim, I put out a video yesterday, talk, uh, and I had a clip in there showing audio recording from both the Buds and the Buzz Plus, and you can hear the difference between them exactly. It's not night and day, but it's definitely noticeable that the Buds having three microphones sound a lot better. Um, although the Buds Plus, uh, the Buds Z are actually pretty good, and I do apologize for keep calling them Buds Plus. It's just there's too many titles on the market now, like we're, you know, OnePlus and Samsung both putting buds in their title. It's very hard to kind of put them in there. Um, Ratnesh is asking, what's the best true wireless headphones for 20 bucks? Honestly, there's a lot, there's some options that you can get for under 20 bucks, but I don't necessarily think that they're going to be the best options. So this is, it's hard to worth, it's, it's hard to kind of put it in. It's just a budget true wireless headphones. Uh, and I think you can probably uh, search. I haven't had a chance to ch uh, check any of those. So if anybody in the comments has seen these, please let me know. Um, um, are the unboxings already made? Yes, uh, I did already unbox the, the phone, but I think you probably asked the questions before I did it, mostly because of the timing and the way the way the way StreamYard is doing things. Davin Davis, congrats to Fat Produce, Andrew Wallace, of course. Um, we can't miss Andrew's getting married, um, uh, and Troy. Um, what gear reviews was fine uh, with us moving out the time. So tomorrow it looks like Troy is going to be on with Matt and Sam uh, a little bit earlier in the uh, in the chat. Um, I don't, I don't know if I saw, uh, Andrew, by the way, Joe, I think Joe's asking if, uh, if, um, Andrew's in the comment, I would imagine Andrew's, uh, super busy getting ready for tomorrow. Uh, that, that would be my only, uh, <laughs> uh, that would be my thing. Um, okay. So Matt, of course, jumping in with another one, dude, twice in a row. I uh, just spoke with Andrew. He said, thanks TK for, uh, for mentioning his, uh, wedding and thank you all for the messages of congratulations. Always, always, always. Uh, he is absolutely an amazing guy. And, um, you know, we play games, you know, we play Call of Duty with him uh, as well. So it's always fun. And I can't wait to, you know, uh, watch the stream tomorrow. Just, you know, wishing him the best luck. And of course, um, hopefully, you know, onward and forward. You know, that's all I would say. Enjoy, have fun. And uh, you guys deserve it, of course. Um, 
Gary, the <laughs> Gary jumping in. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, at a family function, just jumped in to say hi. TKception, of course. I will make sure to come back and get that one, of course. Uh, thank you very much, Gary. Uh, and yes, hope, you, hope you're doing well. I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, we are having some unseasonable, well, not unseasonable. I think it's, it's the time. Um, earlier in the week, we had a lot of heat, a lot of problems, and obviously now we don't. So those are things that I'm, I'm really happy to hear uh, and feel. Uh, we're not getting the hundreds, like a high of 80 now uh, Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Uh, but yes, thank you very much, Gary. Always appreciate it. Um, oh, uh, okay. So um, um, I, um, Aisha is asking is, do you recommend the OnePlus 8 Pro or the one, uh, the uh, Find X2 Pro? I'll be, be very frank. When it comes down to the benefit between the two, they're very similar, right? There's a few things that change them. But when it comes to speed, both offer us a great experience. They both actually share, I would say, almost the same panel. But if I wanted to actually be honest, I feel like the Find X2 Pro camera right now is much better than what we get. <clears throat> what we get with the OnePlus devices. So from that aspect, I would probably say the one, uh, the Find X2 Pro. Um, but as far as actual, uh, you know, if you want it wireless charging, you want reverse wireless charging, uh, then obviously the uh, you know OnePlus 8 Pro would definitely win on that one. Um, I'm not sure what that is. If you don't mind, uh, maybe if you type it in English, hopefully I can try to answer. Um, Aditya is asking, hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe. Have fun. Take care uh, for, for Gary. Gary had to jump out too. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Gary's answering there. Um, okay. So Greg's jumping back. Sorry, TK. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to spam. I just want to uh, want anyone to end up with a brick on the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro. Uh, no, I, I, I get it, Greg. I, I, I understand. It was more about, I think this, the, um, it was just fragmented in the comments, the way it was showing up. That's why I was kind of going through. Um, Gary, the legend, always, always. Um, let me see here. Uh, okay, Greg, safe. Oh yeah, don't don't worry. It's so jumping in. I think I'm sorry. Seeing. Um, okay, so Aditya. Uh, oh, hey, Aditya. Uh, why do Chinese manufacturers add bloatware uh, on their $700 plus flagship phones? That's why I prefer OnePlus iPhones and Pixels. Um, Make, honestly, the actual straight answer, I would probably say it's money. That's the best way to say it. I mean, they only add them because they're making a partnership. There's a benefit to them. They're not adding them because they feel like that makes it, in, you know, that it's a necessity. Reason I say this is you're going to download whatever applications you want the moment you set up your phone. So if you've used Facebook, if you used booking and all of those applications, um, at the end of the day, those are things that you're always going to basically, you know, appreciate right out of the box. You'll install them if you knew you used them. It's when you get them, like you said, on devices that are more expensive. Why would you? Why should you get things like that? At the end of the day, it's a partnership. It's a. It's a. Uh, there's a collaboration, and there's a certain fee why these things are installed. So, uh, I don't think it's a necessary. And I think if you are going to add these applications, you should give us the ability of uninstalling them. There should never be a reason for us to basically be stuck with them. So always, always keep that in mind. Oops, sorry. Um, how much battery life uh, did you get? Uh, in your actual testing of the Bud Z. So as far as the Bud Z, I think for, the, for me, I was able to get over about 13 hours. And I do apologize, I think. Yeah, I think my my uh, the Surface Duo, it, I forgot to turn off the sound on it. I'm getting all my notifications on it. Yes, I know. So uh, let me go ahead and bring that in, close it out. And let's go ahead and put it out. Okay. The, the battery life for me, I haven't had a chance to actually kill the battery entirely. I got it all the way to about 13 hours. So I got them about maybe three or four days ago, and I've been consistently using the Buds Plus. I've used the Buds for a long time, so I know how they work. Uh, so I haven't been able to kill the batteries, and I wasn't able to get to test it to basically be at a 20-hour playback. The big thing that you want to keep in mind with any claim of a company when it comes down to battery life is that the performance that they're recommending is set to be around the 50% battery life, uh, sorry, volume level on the audio. And it's also intended to be where you're closer, where the phone's not having to perform too much. So usage is always going to be a little bit different. For me, I wasn't able to kill the battery. I charged them to 100% and literally after three days of listening to music, which I factored in about 15 to 16 hours, I wasn't able to. Uh, so definitely great battery life, although I would say...
that depending on the internet is just being the internet for me. Sorry, guys. E uh, Android. <laughs> okay. Um, OnePlus has has an offer. If you buy a OnePlus 8 Pro, you get the Wireless Bud Z um, and the Warp Charge 30 uh, wireless charger for free, which is a great deal. I think they did that back then uh, with the wireless charger. I remember the wireless charger was included uh, back when the OnePlus 8 Pro was came, when it was first announced. I don't think the Buds were available at the time. Those were rumored to be launching at the same time, but then they got launched later with the Nord, which was also pushed out. So that's a good deal. That is very good deal. Thank you. Thank you, Ronaldo. Um, and let me double check here. The Bud Z or, uh, or the old Buds, um, only one. Then the Bud Z are the ones. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. Uh, okay. Hey, TK, do you think OnePlus is going to survive? Why they exist still? So OnePlus as a company will definitely survive. There's no question as to their direction may have changed, but they have such a big fan base in what they offer and what they have, and they are still feeding into that existing ecosystem. So their existence and their big big change in what they're doing right now and why they're successful is the way they started is it's they took a, a very interesting operating system uh, you know, called CyanogenMod that was very big in the modding world. They put a phone onto that and then, of course, started building it. In the second generation, they gave us an option of having something called Oxygen OS, and they started building it. Uh, they went from a small company and grew year after year. They've uh, also uh, been able to actually penetrate markets that haven't been able to actually uh, you know, advertise. And they, they literally came to the U.S. as a word of mouth. They weren't advertising. That's how they became the, the name that they are. So... From the enthusiast standpoint, from the company that people now know, it's in the, you know, they have carrier deals with T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. They're in Europe. They're in Asia. They're everywhere. So as a company for us to say basically that they're, why are they still around? I think it's because they've been successful in what they're trying to do. Um, now it doesn't have a, it, it's not a very bad thing to say, but if obviously, you know, they have a lot of resources in the background and we all know obviously that the OnePlus and the, and the Oppo side of the house they shared some things. Obviously, there's some benefit. Oppo is still one of the number one big companies, but they still don't have a presence in the US where if you see what we have here with OnePlus, you're seeing a bigger presence here. So the short answer is what OnePlus is doing is working for them. I'm hoping that what they do now is they still need to keep focusing on what they're offering and not change away from that. So maybe that's the better experience. Uh, I hopefully got your answer there. Um, and then that is a great deal. Yeah, Joe's jumping onto that. Yeah, exactly. Wireless charger and wireless headphones. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I I like uh, the look of this phone. I Joe, come on, put on boom, right there. <laughs> I, I like. Uh, I haven't haven't done that, Joe, before. I get that. Oh man. Um, Okay, so OnePlus also released a new version of the Bullets, uh, but only in uh, in India. Oh, okay, that's a new one. Actually, I didn't hear about that part. Uh, it is something very interesting that they would release only one for there, but I'm assuming it because it's such a big market. I can tell that at least from the last few videos that I've done on the OnePlus Bud Z, uh, if nothing else, I think the majority of the viewers were mostly from India. So there's obviously a big demand in that field, uh, in that market. So I don't, I'm not surprised. Uh, and I fortunately, but I don't have them, so I don't be I won't be able to test them and compare. Uh, Maryland's uh, Mate 40 Pro definitely looks nice. Yes, uh, the color that they decided to go with, you guys can can kind of see here that. So even though it's definitely a fingerprint magnet, there's no question. There is no question there. Uh, but the color, if you can, so you can kind of see how it shimmers. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you guys look at it. So this is how it's kind of changing ever so nicely, depending on how it's hitting the light. Uh, I always love these things. I always love phones that have that multiple color uh, background. Uh, always appreciate the the design and make sure that it has very nice, uh, very nice aesthetics, you know, appeal. Uh, Ayush Batham, uh, yeah, Batham. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Hope you hope you guys are doing well. Um, Okay, who else looks uh, look like T, T, uh, looks at TK's garden and thinks, uh, I'd love to go to TK for a barbecue. <laughs> Every single time I take a picture, there's that barbecue sitting right there. Uh, it, it's a nice, bar it's, a, it's a nice backyard. Yes, definitely. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I love it. My son loves to play with it. Uh, one of the biggest reasons we got, we liked this house was because of the backyard. Um, and then luckily we have some nice shade in the summer. But, you know, as you guys know, if you've probably heard me talk about it before, 
we get some ridiculous heat temperatures here, you know, 44, 45 degrees. It gets hot. Um, great background uh, backyard, and I hope uh, the temperatures definitely stay cool uh, for us here in the near future. Uh, Oh, Davin, thank you, Davin, Davin, thank you very much for the uh, super chat. Uh, as much as the Mate, as as a Mate 20 Pro owner, by the way, the Mate 20 Pro is a, is a it's a perfect device. I, I'd still like my phone. Um, I need to remember where I put it, but uh, of all the devices that kind of made me truly appreciate a Mate series line from Huawei, the Mate 20 Pro was the phone that did it. They did a lot of things there that a lot of companies are still to this day copying and using. That reverse wireless charging, the wireless charging, obviously we've had, but the reverse wireless charging, the curved display, uh, the camera, the quad camera setup on the back, a lot of things. Um, I approve of that unboxing. Mate series always look great. It is, yes. The P series or photographers, uh, you know, dream when it comes down to design and the brand new technology, the Mate series is exactly what it is. They always put the latest and greatest, the best looking phone of the year for Huawei is always going to be the Mate series. And of course, we always see the new processor, the new Kirin 9000. I kept calling the Kirin 990 prior to official announcement, mostly because I couldn't share the name. But yes, uh, it is definitely very, very nice. I mean, thank you very much for the super chat. Always, always appreciate it there. Um, I think I'm jumping too fast. No, wait. Uh, so um, I need to double check, uh, Abdullah. I want to double check and put my SIM card in here and see if I'm actually able to pick up 5G. Uh, this is a European branded model. So there's a chance that I should be able to pick it up. But uh, just for reference in the US, 5G connectivity for us at best, at least where I am, it's about 120, 160. So 160 is the, uh, the fastest I was able to get on my phone. So it's not going to be as fast as uh, some of the connections in the Middle East. But yeah, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll definitely put that in the um, in the initial impressions video that I'm going to put out early next week. So keep it keep it locked. By the way, uh, Monday I'm going to shoot for the impressions video for the Mate 40 Pro. I want to have the phone for a few days. There's no, I don't feel like there's a big thing. That's why I kind of put in the unboxing in as part of this video. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, Abdullah. Uh, sorry. Oh, different one. Sorry. Uh, Abdullah, is, do you think that Huawei will return again? And honestly, your opinion on the Mate 40? Um, there's so Huawei is not gone, right? Huawei is just not is they're not in the sense that right now able to have the same I would say pre mid 2019 glory. That's the best way to describe it. Um, what may, what Huawei has right now and what Huawei is offering us is an experience into what they're capable of pushing the technology that's currently available when it comes to cameras, uh, basically technology. Uh, we have front and back 4K 60 frames per second, which we didn't have in the past. So that's some of the things you want to keep in mind there. Uh, we don't have 8K recording, but we have a five nanometer chipset. We obviously have a large display, curved edges, a beautiful design, uh, quad camera setup. And it's, there's obviously the Mate 40 Pro Plus, which will have the time of flight sensor and an additional sensor. Uh, there's a lot of things to be said as to what Huawei is offering us right now. Can they survive in the current ecosystem and keep proceeding going forward? We know at least for one thing is that they're working more on Harmony OS, which essentially is going to be their own version of an operating system to run on their devices. So if that actually ends up being the situation, we'll have to see how things go with that. My concern, I would say at this point, is to how is the market going to react to it when you start having a third operating system? And what I mean by this, we have iOS, we have Android, and obviously Windows Mobile kind of went to the side. So if we bring in Harmony into the conversation, will other companies such as Instagram, Twitter, F Facebook, all of those main apps that a lot of us are willing or wanting to get, obviously side to, aside from the GMS side of it, are those companies going to basically start jumping on and start provide, you know, producing for it? So that's going to be the biggest concern. At the end of the day right now, we don't see any change. So we'll, my hope essentially is that there's certain things that do change, some regula regulations change. And then at that point, when things open up, installing GMS on this from Huawei, once they get the approval, is an, as easy as a quick update that just installs it on everything. The solution is super simple. The hardware, the operating system is there. And of course, that will also help them kind of go into Android 11 as opposed to just stick into Android 10 at the end of 2020. That's a big difference here. This device looks great running um, EMUI 11, but that's actually running Android 10.0. So the, my my hope is to be able to get the latest and greatest. And of course, uh, I'm hoping that with even with the current situation that Android 11 will come on, they just need, they need a little bit more time. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see, Abdullah. Uh, Sorry, uh, Sikandra is asking is, 
Um, are any are any sorry any release uh, right release date for the OnePlus Seven Pro Oxygen OS Eleven um, open beta? OnePlus has gotten slow with their updates on their older phones, even uh, when it comes to the year old phones. Um, my from what I heard with the latest rumors that I heard, it's going to be in early 2021. And I do apologize. I know it sounds like it's a long time or like it's forever, but if you keep in mind that October is pretty much done, it's they're saying essentially it's in within two months. Uh, most of it, mostly, I think it's because they're they're not even. Uh, I don't know if why it hasn't been available in beta form. That's the biggest thing because I think in beta for the OnePlus Eight that came out pretty quick. Uh, but I think now that they're stable on them, they can start focusing on it. So I wouldn't be surprised if beta comes out a little bit earlier. But as far as the actual actual update for it they did say or at least i heard uh, that it was android uh, it's going to be in early 2021 especially for the uh, the ser seven series devices um uh did you use v uh vestal i'm not sure what it is uh mehmet uh uh, general mobile uh, general mobile phones. No, uh, I, I, I'm not familiar with the general mobile phones or Vestal. Uh, maybe somebody else in the comments does. Uh, Zeke is asking, is Buds Z auto uh, pause and play same as OnePlus? Uh, in my testing, they're not exactly the same. If you're opening them up out of the box, so an example would be this. If I have if I have the buds in the case and I take them out of the case and put them in my ear, yes, the music will automatically start playing on my OnePlus. Uh, I think for me it was the AT. If I had the headphones in my ear and I'm listening to the music and I took it out of my ear, music pauses. When I put it back, it doesn't start again. Not sure why. Uh, it's something to do with either. And again, it could just be me. But for me right now is it, they pause when you take them out of your ear. They don't start up again. Uh, the buds do that because I feel like at least if nothing else, visually, there is a sensor here. There's a and it's hard for me to tell, but there's a, that little black dot that you guys are seeing here is a sensor. It's a proximity sensor to the ear. And when I look at the OnePlus Buds Z, I don't see that sensor. I see the two uh, prongs, which are the, basically the charging pins, but there is no sensor. There is a sensor here that's sitting on the outside, which I guess depends on your ear, if, if it actually sits in there and it recognizes the ear. But they do have the pause and play. You are able to turn it off. So if you take them out, they will pause. And if you put them back on, out of the box, they will play. So it does work to a certain point. I feel like the Buds, the buds do work a little bit better. Uh, IR1980 says Vivo is also officially entering into the European market, which is uh, uh, which is to compete with the BBK group, Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus, uh, official uh, inv uh, involvement in the European market. Competition is the best uh, the best way to, uh, you know, flourish or, you know, I would say just to bring more innovation into the market, right? We want to see more innovation. We want to see more options and better pricing. And when we start looking at the devices at the end of the uh, at the end of the year and we compare them, we want to make sure that we're giving or we're getting a best value. So if Vivo is jumping in there uh, to provide us that experience, absolutely welcome to the club. My son just dropped something on the on the in the room above me. So that that look that you got from me was that little stop there. Uh, Saad is from Iraq. I think it's evening over there. Uh, let me double check here. Okay, we're back. Donald's asking is what is the fastest wireless charger that we have right now? Um, to my knowledge, the fastest wireless charger is uh, the Huawei wireless charger at 50 watts. And I think that came out with the P40 Pro. So I do have that one and I am hopefully going to be testing it out with uh, obviously this guy. Although this guy charges at 66 watts with the, with the charger. So I probably would say not, may, may not need a wireless charger, but I, right now, it, sorry, the Huawei charger is going to be the best option. Um, why does Samsung re, uh, remote 45 volt volt charger in the note? Um, uh, I think, okay. I think what you meant to say is why does Samsung, why did Samsung remove the 45 watt charger, um, for the note 20 ultra? Honestly, don't know. That was something that I was missing. Rushi. Uh, I, I was hoping that the S 20 ultras feature of being able to charge it with 45 watt chargers will transfer, especially since we have the ultra model. Some of the decisions that we have in there are going weird. Uh, and guys, I'm going to switch over. Real quick, uh, my Sony camera decided to die again. Okay, so now we know, um, at least on my end, that for live streaming, the Sony A7S III is not a great option. It's a good thing that I'm still testing it because 
I, I'm, I don't know if you guys know, I, I'm replacing my GH5, which is, it's been my basically workhorse for the last few years. Uh, and as far Okay. So uh, to, to answer the question, Rishi, I'm not sure, but I, I, the only thing I would imagine is some some decisions were made. Um, it's a smaller battery and doesn't have the same charger. So the Note 20 Ultra is a confusing device, slightly confusing for me. Um, IR1980 is asking, TK, uh, you missed the whole load of questions uh, after Davin Davis' uh, super chat. Sorry for bring, uh, to bring it up. Okay, let's. Oh, sorry. Let's jump back real quick for a quick thing, if I can find it. Oh, oh, okay. So let me double check. Oh, one of them is yours, actually. Uh, so here, uh, IRTK, part of the Pixel, uh, sorry, apart from Pixel, Android One uh, and OnePlus, what other software skins uh, skin is close to stock Android from your experience? Um, honestly, I'd say Motorola's uh, skin is actually pretty close. Sony is also pretty close for when it comes down to actually operating. It's not exactly stock, but it's minimal modification when it comes down to what you get with Motorola. Uh, Sony does add some other options, but it's pretty clean, pretty fast, and pretty consistent. So I would say those are the other two companies that stick to closer. Any other companies that generally will put a much more heavily influenced skin. That's, that's the other option there. Um, Okay, I think. Uh, okay, so I think you. I think this one seems like it's an answer to somebody else's question. Um, how's the new made? Any new way to install Google Play services? Uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, Zenchi. Alaikum salam. Um I'm working on that. I'm trying to find a good way uh, to do it right now, out of the box. At least the current methods don't work. Um, uh, EMUI 11 kind of bonks all, all most of the things that we've been able to work on. Most of the methods that we've worked on in the past have, have been EMUI 10.0 dependent. So time will time will tell. A device is literally just starting to hit people's hands uh, about a week ago. This week, actually. It just got announced this week. Um, Phil, uh, some good options for long and uh, for long and earbuds. Okay. Oh, dude, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, coming in there. Okay. Um, Arnab is asking here OnePlus uh, Bullets Z uh, Bullets what, sorry OnePlus OnePlus Bullets Wireless 2 names or the OnePlus Bud Z which one sounds better and how much uh the OnePlus Bullets the OnePlus Bullets Wireless 2 longest name way better much better uh, uh, performance and I, hands down I would go with them uh, in the US at least and I'm not sure if it's different they're about double the price of the OnePlus Bud Z so the Bullets 2 wireless 2 are 100 bucks where the Bullets Z are 50 bucks that's the biggest difference um how is the sound quality of the OnePlus Bud Z for 50 bucks they sound pretty good audio quality overall is okay you're able to tune the experience within the OnePlus devices for the Dolby Atmos the EQ and of course the boosting audio uh, function to get some of that more bassy sound that I think they were trying to advertise and a lot of people were asking they're pretty good for 50 I, I wouldn't I wouldn't skip them uh, and it's a good gift for anybody that's looking to get something like that uh which one? Okay, so here, uh, Michael's asking here, um, I wish OnePlus would release a new version of the bullets uh, with the neck bends in the US. Yes, that's what I was expecting. When I saw, so we knew that they were coming in with wireless uh, bullet, uh, wireless buds, so the the, wire, the OnePlus buds back at the time, the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro, we heard the rumors, we saw that coming, and then we saw them coming the OnePlus, uh, with the OnePlus Nord. Now, the OnePlus Buds came out then and they became available for 80 bucks and now they're available for 60. So we've seen two generations there, but it seems like for this year, for 2020, we're not seeing any new generations of the OnePlus Buds. I feel like they maybe feel like the US market more prefers truly wireless and I think it survives more with so many options that we have that I feel like the, the neck band option, maybe they felt like this wasn't selling. For me, they still sound the best. The, 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 wireless, the wireless Bullets 2, are the best sounding OnePlus headphones, earphones, you know, uh, of all time. Uh, even okay, when you compare them to the uh, wired bullets, they sound better than them. So yeah. Um, Empow and Let's Calm are uh, are serviceable ear uh, earphones for twenty bucks. Definitely yes. No, I appreciate it there. Uh, DTS jumping in. Uh, Matt Tyler, could you just post the link to TK's video comparing the two buds from yesterday? Yeah, I think that will answer a lot of the questions for you guys when it comes down to comparison, especially for audio performance. Uh, but yes. Again, if you haven't had a chance to hit the like and definitely check the video from the uh, the one I posted yesterday, it's easily uh, noticeable and uh, you can find it. Uh, it's hard to miss. Um, 
without, without the Google apps, is the Mate 40 Pro worth it? Right now, I would say it depends on your usage. If you're heavily invested in Maps, Gmail, as well as uh, using Google Play services, I feel like that's going to be the number one option. Uh, you know, basically, say those are going to be a necessity for me. Now, surprisingly, and I, this is going to sound kind of interesting, but so they have their own mapping service. There, they do have an application that they listed, and I didn't get a chance to check it out to see how it works in the U.S. Uh, when it comes to Gmail, we don't really need to use the Gmail app. A lot of us don't realize that we can actually use any third-party email application, like the default one that comes built into Huawei phones, to check our emails, even Gmail. Uh, if it doesn't work automatically, log into the web portal and turn on the pop three option so that you can actually use a mail client to check your email. So from a Gmail standpoint, for me, I don't feel like I'm missing much on it. I mean, some of those features in Gmail obviously are not going to be there. Uh, when it comes down to other services, other things that we want to be able to have, like the seamlessness of downloading the applications, that's going to come with time. Uh, right now, if you're looking for a good a device like a Mate series, you're a fan of Huawei, uh, you know, when it comes down to technology with cameras and the way the software uh, ecosystem with EMUI, you're not going to be disappointed. Uh, the Google services, there are ways to get to what you need. It's not a convenient way because web apps are a thing, meaning you can use web, uh, web based version of Gmail as well as web based version of all Google applications. They're not as functional. That's the only thing is notifications don't come through. Those are different things that you want to work with. Uh, but there are things, you know, not everybody is in the same position. So I, I really would say more of how you use it. Um, I haven't had a chance to spend that much time with this one. I can say this though, with earlier versions of Huawei phones, I've always installed GMS. I have it installed on my Mate 30 Pro. I have it installed on my P30 Pro, uh, P40 Pro. Uh, so for me, I generally do find a way at some point to get it in. So those are things I would say that as long as we get that function, we should be fine. Uh, okay, so uh, ta -ta -ta. yeah, so everybody, guys, if you guys haven't had a chance to, there's the link. Uh, Matt Tyler just posted it. This is the link for the video that we put that I posted yesterday. Again, uh, comparing the OnePlus Buds Z versus the OnePlus Buds. So that one will get you pretty much the, the best experience possible there. Um, let me see here if I can jump in there. Okay, so um, Karan is asking here, um, does the OnePlus Buds Z have AAC codec or APT aptX? They have AAC. Both the Z and the Z, uh, and the Buds both have AAC and SBC. They do not have aptX audio. Uh, yes, I'll get them here. What do you think about the Huawei? Okay, uh, Ferro has asked uh, before. Uh, Honestly, right now, I'm, I'm actually I'm very impressed with the build quality, the function. The sound actually was surprisingly very nice. The stereo separation between the two, because we actually have two stereo speakers now, which if you've ever used a Xiaomi, like the Mi 10 Pro or the Mi 10, you notice that there is the speakers. There's a top firing speaker and a bottom firing speaker on top of the earpiece that's present here. It's not in display sound. So you're, you're still getting the best experience there. Um, my initial impressions are okay. Uh, I have had it maybe 48 hours, no, not 40 hours, maybe 24 hours. So I'm still, uh, I'm in the early stages of making my opinion, but hopefully by Monday, I, I should have a good answer for you guys. Um, okay. So here, IR1980, TK, in your opinion, uh, okay, oh, uh, which Android device are the worst, uh, for aggressively killing background apps and which are the opposite? Oh man. So I would say... The worst, when it comes down to aggressive, as far as app closure or basically killing processes, um, every company is, tr is getting better. I'll just say that. They're getting better. Um, as far as which one is the worst, in my opinion, right now, um, I feel like the best way to, to gauge that is by basically looking at some of your notification, your devices that have notification issues. I'm not going to say OnePlus is not known for it, but they do have some concerns, some issues with some notifications being delayed because the process is not running in the background. So I would say most of the ones that have heavily skinned uh, versions of their operating system are going to have a little bit more aggressive uh, battery management, as they usually call it, because it, it's always, at the end of the day, a combination or a, a somewhat of a balance between power efficiency and performance. If they allow everything to keep running in the background, your device is going to slow down, your battery is going to get drained, you're not going to be able to enjoy your phone all the time. So what they do is they flip that on the other side and basically start becoming very more, more aggressive in the battery management. The short answer on this is most of the ones that we've seen in the past allow you to exclude things or at least put things on the exclusion list uh, from being managed by the battery management. I mean, Samsung is known for this as well. They're very aggressive. I mean, they give us 12 gigs of RAM or 10 gigs of RAM, but if you notice that most of that is for their own processes, it's not necessarily for um, basically just all our app users. So I would say if you have a device that you're noticing it, 
jump into the settings and make sure you customize that experience. Um, is it worth buying? Uh, is it worth buying the OnePlus Bud Z based on the budget? Yes, I think for the price they're definitely good, and for the features they're also very good. Um, Sam is asking if this. Uh, okay, so Samsung's Tab S. Uh, sorry, the Tab S five E supports Desk Mod. Uh, with the Snapdragon 675, why does Samsung and uh, why does the A series Samsung not support Dex? Is there any mod or root setup to bomb it? Okay. Um, the the reasoning behind it, I don't have a straight answer from a marketing standpoint. Why does Samsung choose not to provide that feature? It could also be part of the factor of what they pay for for what they're factoring in the price point of the device. A series are generally less expensive. Uh, we are seeing that Dex is becoming available on tablets. I know the Tab S7 Plus has it as well, and as well as some of the other tabs. But generally, those tabs are more expensive than some of the A series phones. So think about it. I think it's more of a pricing standpoint because it always and them at the end of the day comes down to price. I feel like Samsung feels that the S series is as is a Dex supported device uh, tablet. So the Tab S7, the Tab S devices, the Note series have it, and those are the ones that are going to generally keep getting them. I don't know why they're taking it out. Um, as far as a mod or a root that enables Dex, Dex is baked into the operating system. The only way to get it to run on a device that doesn't have it is to run another device's operating system, and typically Samsung devices don't do that well. Um, it, it's not just software where you're able to basically install an APK. We're talking about solid, you know, operating system uh, recovery, kernel, all the different drivers for everything that's in there is different between devices. So unfortunately, not an easy way. There are, I can say this, once Android 10 or Android 11 desktop experience on from Google becomes more prominent, you will no longer feel the need or the big need to basically say, well, I'm missing Dex when Android has it built in. So, but it's still in the works. It hasn't been officially made. Uh, it's available if you force it, but it's not there all the time. So I'm hoping that kind of answers the question for you there. Um, Michael's jumping in. There's probably a huge market for people uh, shopping for low-end earphones, and um, and the YouTube review community doesn't really address it. I really, I, I realize that yes, uh, we use earphones all the time. That's something that we, you know, we don't realize it, but. Um, unless you're not, unless you're listening to the music, unless you, unless you have your phone, and you have it on speakerphone, and you're listening to the tunes, which most of us won't, because not only are they're not really meant to be enjoyed that way. Um, you're right, uh, inexpensive earbuds because we template, you know, again, we use them. We, we you know, if they die, if they get damaged, you want to be able to replace them and not feel too bad. Uh, I think there is a big market. You're right, and I think maybe you should start focusing a little bit more on that with the channel, just to kind of give more of a roundup of you know budget earphones in 2020, especially as we get closer to the holidays. Uh, let me jump here real quick. Uh, I'm okay. I think I'm starting to see some comments here. Yes, I'm starting to see my own comments back again. Uh, and I just saw IR. Okay. Uh, I don't have any information, Mehmet, on the on the Mizu 16th, uh, uh, the the Flam OS with the 8 gig yet. Sorry, I haven't heard much about Mizu in uh, lately. Uh, da, da, da. I think I don't know. We already answered your question and. Oh, Paco, uh, man, passing by a uh, nice cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Appreciate it. Uh, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always. And we're getting close, actually, almost close to the show at the end of the show, guys. We're getting close to that two hours, uh, two hour mark. Um, so IR98, um, I think, uh, Matt Tyler, aren't you getting the Surface Duo? Uh, I think Matt was trying, were, was going to borrow it from somebody and I forgot something happened, but I think it ended up going back. Matt came back with no, sorry. Um, I think there was a customs issue, if I'm not mistaken. Matt said, uh, posted about it over on Twitter, and uh, it was like a ridiculous number when it came to the import. I think it was like 300 pounds to import that in as an import tax. Uh, even though he wasn't buying the phone, it was actually just a loaner, just to be able to borrow it. Uh, it's it's it was just yeah, it was up there in the price. Let's just say that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's let's not waste any time. I don't want to skip this. I want to make sure we catch it correctly. Let's go ahead and jump in full screen. And um, I am going to have to figure out a solution to this if I want to stick to using the A7S III as my main camera because this is, yeah. Okay, let's turn off. First, let's turn on the, uh, the A7 again. And it's not going to overheat now. Let's go ahead and switch cameras back. I got to figure out what to do. Okay, we're back in the, we're back in the camera. It just it looks so much better, right? Um, except that it's 
way under color. Okay, so well, we'll have to figure that part. I don't know what's. I think it's something to do with the overheating. But either way, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick TK section. I have a few. Let's see. Da, da, da. Do I have a few comments? Uh, I just need a few. Okay, so we're back in the okay. The colors are back. I have a feeling it may end up being the battery issue. We'll have to see. Maybe it's a battery. Uh, I just need a few comments in here showing. Oh, here it is. Okay, Davin Davis is jumping into it. Let's do screen sharing. And let's go ahead and add that in. And one, two, three. Oh, right there, right there. Uh, we have Ronaldo in the chat, of course. Everybody, thank you very much, Ronaldo. Aditya, as usual, Hat Fat Brodus tomorrow. Congratulations again, Andrew, on your uh, on your new, on your nuptials, my friend. Davin Davis, of course, nuptial hashtag nuptials. You, you got me, Davin. Uh, everybody, uh, always always appreciate. Teeks. Oh, Matt Tyler, of course, cannot forget Matt Tyler. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find uh gary's i need to find gary's comment ah dang it okay uh gary this is your uh, this just we saw it thank you very much i want to say thank you again with, with ever, for everybody for commenting on it of course ronaldo um of course TK, matt tyler there's a lot of people in here yes though uh, we're definitely doing really really good uh, thank you for everybody for for the comments for for the show for supporting everybody and I do realize a lot of people were very uh, their biggest concern today obviously with the question is oh Joe do Joe 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 real quick okay we'll do one more with Joe sorry I, I saw it, it's the whole the the whole uh, slow process of uh, how it goes here let's do Joe real quick boo right there Joe with the family thank you very much oh here it is one more. Oh man, always, always appreciate it. Thank you guys. And let's just stop this one here, bring it back. So to kind of recap the, uh, the, the show today, oh, I didn't want to go full screen. Let's go back. I always want to keep my comments on the second screen. So to recap the show today, uh, the number one question I would have to say is which one is better? Is it the OnePlus Bullets or the OnePlus Bullet Z? Straight answer, honestly, guys, is the OnePlus Bullet Z when it comes down to what you're getting out of it. For 50 bucks, you're getting in-ear uh, as well as you're getting audio uh, tuning with Dolby on your phone. They're going to sound great for 50 bucks. There's no question. You're not you're not going to be disappointed. Just, again, make sure that your expectations are around the $50 mark, not the $300 mark or the $150 mark. So do they sound as good as the Pixel X, uh, Pixel Bud? No. The Pixel Buds are very different. Do they sound the same as the, uh, you know, the... Um, the the Samsung buds or the buds uh, the beans or the buds plus different experience different uh, different total uh, uh, process I think once we see Hey Melody and see what the functions are going to be coming out of it maybe there is going to be an improvement in quality and I will do, be doing more videos on that once that comes out but at the end of the day I think the OnePlus Buds Z give great audio uh, for the price and they are a little bit better in the sense of audio performance when it comes down to just enjoying the uh, the audio. The buds, the OnePlus buds are better in the sense of hardware and performance in that sense, but they're, they need to be better to compensate for the fact that they're not in ear, meaning they're not actually in the canal and providing that sound isolation. So you're still able to listen to external audio. That's the biggest difference. Uh, when it comes down to the Mate line of series devices this week, we got a chance to check out the Mate 40 Pro. Uh, again, I do want to say thank you very much to Huawei for allowing me to check it out. And of course, Gim, being able to share with you guys my opinions. Um, it's a unique phone. It's a very unique experience. It's definitely an evolutionary upgrade to what we saw last year, but it's also the move into the five nanometer chipset uh, technology. So we're no longer going with the Kirin, you know, 990, uh, sorry, 980, uh, 970. We're jumping into the Kirin 9000. So we're in the next uh, realm of what uh, Huawei is trying to do. And of course, hopefully we'll be able to see some more improvements. And obviously, uh, a way for us to basically load Google Play services. Because again, for me, those are big things that I like to do on any of, most of my devices. Um, and of course, I do want to mention here, and thank you, Aditya, for jumping in here. I do want to say thank you very much to Matt uh, for helping the channel with moderating the comments. I, he's one of the big moderators that we have in the channel here. And I do want to say thank you very much. Uh, Matt uh, will be here. So tomorrow, seven, uh, so tomorrow across the podcast with Troy, uh, what, gear, uh, what Gear Review, it's at 9 p.m. Uh, British Standard Time, so 3 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, which essentially is noon my time. It's about an hour earlier. Uh, oh no, central, uh, two hours. Wait, are, 
I think so. I, I, well, sorry, it's so it's 9 p.m. British Standard Time, which essentially is 1 p.m. my time, if I'm not mistaken. So it's 1 p.m. my time, uh, Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Central Time for Sam. Um, and of course, Matt Produce will hopefully will be able to join. Um, although if he doesn't, I totally understand. That's the best way to say it. Um, and uh, Mehmet saying iPhone 12 or OnePlus 8 Pro. I would say OnePlus 8 Pro, hands down. Nothing against the iPhone 12. Uh, but I feel like the OnePlus 8 Pro offers more. It has more features for the for the for the comparison. I feel like the 8 Pro maybe closer to the, uh, if you compare it to the OnePlus the iPhone 12 Pro, maybe a better experience there. Okay. Um, so with that being said, I think we are hitting it right on the T. There's about less than two minutes almost before we hit the two hour mark. Um, I'm impressed with what Huawei is offering with the Mate 40 Pro. Um, I think what they're offering us and what they're going for is definitely going to be very nice. Uh, Okay. Seven. Okay, so seven p.m. British Standard Time for the show and nine p.m. British Standard Time for Andrew's wedding. <laughs> okay, I got it. Now I'm getting it. Okay, sorry, Matt, jump back in. Across the podcast will be at seven, but and then of course the show will be over at about eight, which essentially is when or not, sorry, uh, eight eight thirty. So by nine p.m. British Standard Time, which essentially is two three o'clock. No wait, nine p.m. will be two p.m. my time. Uh, the, the wedding. So sure, just focus on British Standard Time. So by 7 p.m. is the show, 9 p.m. will be the wedding. Uh, and of course, for everybody else. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, I think, like I said, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, there's a video that was posted yesterday on the channel for the Buds Z versus the Buds Plus. That one is doing quite well. Hopefully you guys are getting a chance to check it out. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to Aditya, Marilyn, um, Joe, uh, IR1980. Uh, I want to say, of course, Matt Tyler, Ronaldo, Dominic, Davin Davis, of course, jumping into the chat. Uh, we got a whole bunch of different, you know, a whole bunch of people that are jumping in. Of course, uh, uh, Goran Petrovic was in there. I'm sorry. I did see your, I just saw your name, Goran. I didn't get a chance to catch your comment before. Hopefully I didn't miss. And now I can't find it. It just, just really like, uh, okay. I, I want to say I saw Goran, but I don't want to, uh, either way, Gary, the fireman, of course, congratulations to Matthew, uh, sorry, to fat produce. And of course, um, I'll, I'll let you guys know more about the, uh, collaboration with, uh, Juan Carlos when it comes down to, uh, the service duo versus the, obviously the Note 20 ultra, uh, with that being said, thank you very much. Uh, stay safe, stay cool. Uh, I I'm sorry for the whole color situation, color shift and going on. Uh, it's, it's an interesting experiment. I'm using the a seven, the a seven S three as my primary camera. Um, but I am using it with a power source. So I'm hoping to figure out a way to make this work. It, it has to support the channel. It cannot basically uh, overheat at, at 30 minutes, which is a big issue for me. So we'll have to see how things go. Like and subscribe as usual. Um, you can find me obviously on YouTube as TK Bay. There's an Arabic channel as Tariq Bay. So T-A-R-E-K-B-A-Y. Uh, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as TKDSL8655. And of course... Uh, it's okay, Habib. Uh, <laughs> old best gold. Uh, and then, of course, thank you. Stay safe. Thank you, Ronaldo. Hashtag stay safe. Hashtag take care. Um, I'll see you guys. And of course, oh, British summertime. Not oh, <laughs> Paco. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't. I just saw it. Uh, just keep it running uh, for the show tomorrow. And of course, I'll see you guys next Saturday. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much. Oh, make sure you call and you check on somebody you haven't talked to for some time and your friends. Anytime you call anybody you haven't talked to for a while, they're always going to be appreciated to hear from you. I'll see you guys next week. Take care, you guys.